So guys what's up what if Naruto x Shayera x Shira x Black Canary x Harem movie. The 22 year old blonde haired member of the Justice League was sitting atop a large sign that read welcome to Bloodhaven overlooking the traffic on the highway below him, the sound of cars honking and passing by was deafening and he was contemplating leaving if his client didn't show up in the next minute or so. As a member of the Justice League he was paid decently but not enough to live a comfortable life free of stress like some of their other members. You'd think with how important their job was, and how often they risked their lives to save the country, they'd make a lot more, that wasn't the case though, and because of that he would take jobs on the side using his abilities, as a meta-human with the ability to conjure anything he imagined, his services were often utilized by others for a small fee. Some members of the Justice League disapproved but others in the same situation as him had started doing the same thing, it was because of this desire to make a bit more money that he found himself here in Bloodhaven, had been contacted by Nightwing to meet him here today at 11 p.m., it was now 11.04 and still no sight of Batman's former sidekick. Just as he was preparing to stand up and send the man an angry text the sound of someone landing behind him halted that plan. Naruto swiveled his head to see the man clad in his usual black suit with blue bird insignia on his chest making to sit down next to him. I was just about to leave, Naruto commented, raising a leg up so he could rest his arm on it, Nightwing didn't respond, instead stared down at the passing cars below them for a minute, gathering his thoughts. Thanks for waiting. Mind telling me what kind of jobs you take on? He asked, still not looking at him. The blonde frowned at the demeanor his friend was displaying, he wouldn't say they were best pals or anything of the sort but any time the two worked together it was usually a relatively good time, to see him this serious looking, even with the mask on was a bit concerning to say the least. I'll do almost anything so long as it isn't illegal and I am getting paid, why? What do you need me to do? He asked. Nightwing sighed and finally turned to look at him, I need to make use of your skills, he said cryptically. Naruto nodded, feeling a bit relieved that it wasn't anything bad, well, I am sure you're familiar with how my powers work, he began but stopped when the man shook his head. Not those skills, I've heard you've passed yourself around a lot of the women up in the watchtower. Naruto didn't blush in embarrassment but smirked at the accusation, I don't know about that but I've definitely enjoyed the company of a few of our colleagues, still, I'll ask again. What exactly do you need me to do? You know Barbara. Goes by Oracle these days, he started, seeing Naruto nod in affirmation he continued, maybe you've heard or maybe you haven't but we used to date a few years ago, long story short she ended up cheating on me with Batman, even got pregnant with his kid but had a miscarriage, this was all before Joker got the drop on her and cost her the use of her lower half. Naruto stared wide eyed at the man, this was the first had heard of this, had met the woman before and she seemed friendly enough he didn't think she was capable of something like that, with Batman of all people, having seen how much of a hard-ass Batman was and how he seemingly cared for the members of the League, it was hard to picture him doing something like that to his own protege. You wouldn't be telling me this for no reason, Naruto replied, filing the information away. I tried to let it go and move on with my life without them, but I still think about it even now, he said with a hint of anger, Naruto was beginning to think maybe he should have said no to coming here, with the direction this was going he was afraid had put a hit out on Oracle and the Dark Knight. I need your help to get back at them, Naruto let out a breath he didn't know had been holding, okay, he wasn't planning a murder, he could work with this, maybe, I want you to get close to Barbara, make her feel for you what I felt for her, then destroy it, he said, gripping the metal below them with enough force the blonde thought for sure had ripped through it. I assume you have a plan in mind for that? Naruto asked wearily, now really wishing he hadn't shown up. Nightwing nodded, she's going to catch you in the act with Catwoman, he said, shocking the blonde. How the hell was he supposed to do that? The question must have been clear on his face since the man smirked at him, that's where I'll need your skills, find a way to make it happen and bring her to the hotel downtown, he said, motioning his head to a large building in the distance, take care of business with her and Barbara will have gotten an anonymous message leading her to you. You know that's gonna make me look bad up in the watchtower, he said, crossing his arms. I know you slept with Canary while she was still with Arrow, everyone knows, so don't try and play the innocent guy. Damn. Alright but even for you I am not doing this for free, this is a lot of work, you're asking me to emotionally manipulate a paraplegic woman into thinking I love her, break her heart, and also screw Catwoman, why her anyway? Nightwing scoffed, Catwoman is probably the only woman Batman genuinely cares about, he's not getting off the hook either. So you're adding me to the Dark Knight's shit list too? This isn't going to be a cheap job for you, I know I do a lot of things for money but this is messed up, if you don't cough up 2 million dollars you can forget it, Naruto shot back. 
To his surprise, the black-haired hero actually chuckled and pulled his phone out, is that all? I was sure you'd ask for more but that's fine with me, I'll wire half now and the other half once the job is done. Naruto felt his own phone vibrate in his pocket, the notification on the screen told him about a pending deposit of $1 million, the blonde glanced back at the man who was standing up and stretching. Try to make contact as soon as possible and let me know when I need to book the hotel, he said, preparing to leave. Naruto just stared at the notification on his phone, in a few minutes had made enough to live well off even in the most expensive cities in America, and once he finished crushing two people's spirits it would double. Nightwing, he called out, you're sick man, see a therapist. The man shook his head, so you're not gonna do it? He asked, pulling his phone back out. Naruto shook his head, no, I am gonna do it. I am just saying this is twisted beyond belief, this is some villainous shit you're asking for, I don't think someone like Lex Luthor would do some shit like this. You're the one agreeing to do it for money, so which one of us is worse? You have my number, keep me updated, with that, the man left, leaving him alone to his thoughts, he never thought he'd see the day where he saw someone have a breakdown like this in real time, still, Nightwing had a point. He was twisted for asking for this but he was no better for accepting it since he could pay, he sighed and stood up regardless of his feelings had received a deposit and Nightwing was his client now, had see the job through to the end. A part of him knew it was morally wrong to go through with it, but if Nightwing's story was legit, he couldn't say they didn't have it coming, oh well, it'll get started tomorrow, he thought to himself as he disappeared from atop the sign. The next morning he woke up and went online to see if Barbara was online on her social media account, while he wasn't much for posting or anything like that, he did follow most of the Justice League members and the women were very active there in their free time. He found Barbara's account and sent her a quick good morning message before proceeding with his day, over the course of the day he managed to keep her engaged in conversation unrelated to work and dropping small compliments here and there, by the end of the night he even had her playing that game where one likes a picture, then another and so on and she would respond in kind. The next couple weeks the trend continued, this time having moved over to texting as Shed sent him her personal number so she didn't have to always be on the app, they would talk for hours on end about anything and everything, her time as Batgirl, her hobbies, what she would do to help out even wheelchair bound. He did find it amazing that even while condemned to a chair she managed to use her tech abilities to find a way to still help, it wasn't until a month later that the two met up at a local coffee shop for a drink before he had to go on patrol. When he arrived he noticed her towards the back of the shop with a book in hand and a drink on the counter, next to her was another drink with a bit of steam rising from the top, she must have arrived not too long ago and taken it upon herself to order. She turned around having heard the small chime of the door and smiled when she saw him, he noticed she was dressed in black jeans with flats along with a red button-up shirt, despite what had been told about her it didn't stop him from thinking she looked really good. Naruto made his way over and pulled out the chair to sit down, hey Barbara, nice to see you, he greeted her warmly. The former Batgirl returned his smile and greeted him back, hello Naruto, it's nice to see you too, it's strange, I think this is the first time we've actually met for something not work-related. Yeah I think it is, I've just never had the opportunity to talk to you really, he confessed, but we're here now and I have about 20 minutes before I have to start my patrols, so how's your week been? He asked, taking a sip of his drink. Barbara recounted the events of the past few days in vivid detail, feeling glad to have someone besides her girlfriends to listen to, she knew they'd take her side on anything she said unless it was work related so it was nice to have another perspective on things. Naruto meanwhile listened the entire time keeping his eyes on hers letting her know he was paying attention, what felt like 5 minutes quickly turned into 20 and before the pair knew it, Naruto was set to start his shift, not knowing when he'd have another opportunity, he made his first move right there. Hey Barbara, he called out while she was putting her phone in her purse, thanks for the drink. She smiled at him and shook her head, tucking a strand of hair behind her ear, you're welcome, well, I have to get going too, I have a few errands I need to run. Before you go, she looked up at him with a questioning look, would you like to go out this weekend? He asked, catching her slightly off guard, there's a new exhibit at the museum a few streets down if you'd like to go. Her mouth opened and closed a few times before she was able to gather herself, uh, yeah that sounds great, text me the details. Yeah, I'll text you tonight, he held the door open for her so she wouldn't have trouble exiting and disappeared from view leaving the woman to let a shade of red appear on her face. It had taken everything she had to not blush out of embarrassment having been caught off guard by his sudden question. She rolled away with a noticeable smile on her face, unaware of Naruto's invisible figure watching her from atop a building. I know she hurt Nightwing badly but this is gonna kill me inside just a bit, he thought before actually leaving to get to work. 
Later that night after an easy day of patrolling he laid in bed and texted Barbara, letting her know the time and place to meet up. The exhibit was on for the next two weeks or so and he scheduled it for five days from now. She knew where the place was and told him she would be there. He shook his head and laid his head down on the pillow, staring aimlessly at the ceiling above him. This was messed up in all sorts of ways, Barbara and Batman for their treachery, Nightwing for orchestrating this elaborate plot, and him for actively participating. Still though, two million dollars was a lot of money. What goes around comes back around I suppose, he thought to himself, picking up his phone he texted Nightwing, giving him an update on his progress, while he thought it was messed up he was still his client and would get the job done regardless of how he felt. The man responded positively and told him to keep it up and to not forget to let him know when he got Catwoman, that presented another problem, how was he supposed to get her to agree to sleep with him? The two had only run into each other a handful of times, making a meeting between them rare. He turned in for the night, deciding to worry about it in the morning, placing his phone on the table, he turned the lights off and went to sleep. In the blink of an eye, the day was here, he stood outside the door of the museum dressed in casual clothes consisting of a pair of black jeans, Nikes, and a dark blue short sleeve button up shirt, he checked his phone and saw that it was a few minutes past their meeting time. I can see why Nightwing and her were together, they both like to keep people waiting, he thought to himself slightly irritated. Sorry I am late, had a little trouble at home, he heard from beside him, Barbara rolled up until she was next to him and offered him an apologetic smile. No worries, I haven't been here long anyway, come on, let's go inside, he said, slowly making his way towards the door, had looked up tips on what going on a date with a wheelchair-ridden woman was like and saw that he should nt jump at the chance to push her unless it was asked for. She rolled into the building and slowly, the two made their way around the exhibit, the pieces were interesting and the two often found themselves discussing certain pieces and what they thought the artist was thinking when he created them, overall, it was an enjoyable time. Naruto, Barbara called out as they sat at a small table in the food area of the building, can I ask you something? Sure, what made you decide to ask me out today? She asked. Nightwing hasn't gotten over what you did to him so he hired me to help him, he thought instantly, he couldn't say that though, well, during the time we were chatting I thought you were funny, clearly smart, and driven from what you've told me about yourself. There were times I found myself grinning like an idiot at my phone while reading a message and thought, I wonder if she's like this in person too and decided to find out, he responded. It wasn't completely a lie. Everything he said was true, it just wasn't the main reason he did so, chances were, had he not known about her affair with Batman and the damage it did to Nightwing, had have asked her out if given the chance. Barbara's mouth was slightly open at the confession and she quickly closed it, realizing he was still looking at her, it doesn't bother you that I am like this, she asked, pointing at herself, it was clear she was talking about the wheelchair, she looked good in the sundress she was wearing so that was the only thing. He shook his head, no, I'll admit this is the first time I've ever been on a date with a paralyzed woman but I don't care about that, I am having a good time with you and I hope that can continue. Barbara quickly took a sip of her drink in order to gather her thoughts, not expecting him to be so concise with his answer, well, I am sure it will, come on, let's finish up, we still have a few other rooms to check out. Naruto followed along and for the next two hours, they continued enjoying each other's company, by the end of the night, he offered to walk her home since she didn't live too far away, the trip was mostly silent with the occasional comment or quip here and there until they arrived at her front door. I had a great time, thank you, she said, having turned the chair to look up at him. He smiled at her, I did too, any chance we can do it again soon? He asked. Yeah I think we can do that, she replied, extending a hand, Naruto took it, and found himself being pulled down towards her, he felt her lips plant themselves on his cheek for a brief moment before it was over, she said nothing else and made her way up the small ramp available and waved at him before she disappeared through the door. He stared at the door for a moment before being on his way as well. Over the next two months they went on more dates, one every two or three days, movies, picnics, other museums, dinners, the whole shebang, it wasn't until the beginning of the third month of them seeing each other that she suggested they stay at his place for the night instead of going out. He had no problem with this and set up a movie on the large TV had gotten, courtesy of Nightwing, Barbara arrived at 8pm dressed in some sweatpants and a matching thin grey sweatshirt, he let her in and once they reached the living room he reached down and Princess carried her out of the chair and onto the couch. Thanks, she muttered, still embarrassed that he had to do that for her. No problem, he replied, sitting down next to her, ready for the movie? Neither said another word and tried to enjoy the admittedly terrible movie, somewhere in the middle of the movie just as a building was exploding, the blonde felt her hand reach over and place itself on his thigh. 
He looked over at her to see her giving him a knowing look and moved her hand upwards just a tad bit. Barbara, he muttered, normally at this point had have gotten the hint and began kissing her knowing where it was going but this was a new situation. It's been three months, I think we both know why I wanted to spend the night, she whispered to him after leaning in slightly, it'll be different since, you know, I can't really feel down there but that's not the point, I want to do it, she said with conviction. Naruto stared at her for a moment and inwardly shrugged, he was all for new experiences, their faces leaned closer to one another until they were engaged in a heated makeout session, this wasn't the first time they'd kissed, far from it, it was the first time he knew they'd be going all the way though. Barbara raised her arms to let the sweatshirt be removed, exposing a very small thin tank top, she wasn't wearing a bra if the outlines of her nipples poking through the fabric was any indication, that too was swiftly removed revealing her light nipples. Not wanting to be the only one exposed, the former Batgirl pulled his shirt over his head exposing his well-built body. Let's go, she said, the blonde took her in his arms and made his way to his bedroom before gently placing her on the bed, Barbara used her arms to move herself to the center of the bed and motioned him to join him. I am gonna need some help taking these off, she pointed at her sweatpants, he removed his own pants first and joined her on the bed, he swiftly pulled her pants down to reveal light pink lacy panties, he looked up at her with a raised eyebrow much to her embarrassment. Don't just stare, he chuckled and removed them as well and finally saw the equally pink lips that Shed been covering. He wasn't sure if her body would respond to stimulation and lubricate but just in case he gave it an experimental lick, she had laid back to stare at the ceiling, probably not wanting it to be awkward that she couldn't feel anything. Naruto reached up to pinch her nipples with one hand, and smiled at the moans she emitted, for the next few minutes while he ate her out he made sure to tease her chest as much as he could while he lubed her up, her body did respond as it turned out as he could taste the sweet nectar she produced, even if she didn't feel it. Are you ready Barbara? he asked as he crawled above her and captured her lips with his. She nodded, Naruto lined himself up with her and just before he penetrated, he activated his power, he rewrote Barbara's reality using his imagination conjuring ability to where she would be able to feel him inside her and all the pleasure that would come with it. Having done that, he pushed his rod in, spreading her nether lips as he did so, he wasn't sure if the lack of use of her bottom half had anything to do with it but she was absurdly tight. Oh she moaned out loud then turned to look at him with wide eyes, what? she asked, slightly startled. Naruto pretended not to hear and continued pushing into her, enjoying the way she threw her head back in pleasure as their bodies finally connected, not giving her a chance to gather herself, he pulled out and just as quickly thrusted himself back inside. His eyes went from her pleasure-stricken face to the sight of her breasts bouncing up and down with every thrust, the sight of her tits bouncing, combined with the snug heat and wetness that was currently enveloping him was amazing. He slowed down a few minutes after she began tightening up around him and coming for the first time in who knows how long, he didn't stop his motions, still enjoying the way her womanhood seemed eager to keep him in her. Naruto kissed her slowly and moved a strand of hair out of her face, how you doing Barbara? I, can feel it somehow, she moaned in a sexy tone, her eyes were still half-lidded, she was clearly focused on continuing to get off, I don't know why, but I can, ask later, fuck me now she pleaded. He smirked and sped up his thrusts, causing the woman beneath him to moan louder than she had before. Just like that, don't stop. I am, I am, coming she squealed, once again her core tightened up and he could feel every part of her pussy doing its best to get him to erupt, it almost worked but he managed to hold on, but he knew it wouldn't be for long. Barbara, I am close too, what do you want me to do? He asked, still keeping his face pace. She bit her lip and shook her head though with how her body was bouncing he wasn't sure what she was going for. Can't, inside, come here, she moaned, pointing at her face. Moments before he knew head blow he pulled out of her, a wet slosh sound was produced as he did so, he quickly made his way over to her head and in an instant her mouth was swallowing his cock, Shed given him head before, but Shed never been this enthusiastic about it, given how close he was she only had to top him up for about 10 minutes before he could feel it coming. I am close barbs, he warned, using one of her old nicknames, the woman didn't stop and continued what she was doing, just before he blew she let him go and opened her mouth, the first couple of shots landed perfectly in her mouth while the others hit part of her chin and cheek. He took a few deep breaths and laid down beside her, watching as she scooped up the bits on her face and also took them into her mouth before swallowing, the sight had him ready to again, and she took notice of it but gave him a sad smile. I'd love to continue but I am actually spent, I don't know how but I could feel it, she said softly reaching between her legs only to find that she couldn't feel her fingers, I am not sure why I can't anymore, that was the best I've had though, we can try again tomorrow in the morning if you want, she offered,
feeling pathetic that this was all she was capable of. It's not your fault, we can do it again tomorrow, for now I am just glad you got to enjoy it, he said, pulling her close to him after her face was cleaned and hugging her, the two cuddled for an hour before going to sleep. Things only seemed to get better for them after that night and the two could be found going at it either at his or her place at least three times a week, had gotten in contact with Nightwing after the first night, letting him know of his progress and was reminded about the second part of the plan, whether it was by chance or not, he found an opportunity to get to Catwoman. Had heard from a source that a truck full of diamonds was going to be stopping by a jewelry store not too far from here to pick up a shipment of sold goods, in that truck were supposed to be a handful of the largest jewels in the world, that was something he was sure Shed be taking an interest in. When night fell on the day of the pickup, he was ready. Naruto stood atop a building across the street, using his power to make himself invisible and waited, he smirked to himself a few minutes later when the aerobatic woman in the black skin tight suit landed on the roof of the jewelry store and hid herself from view, waiting for the truck to arrive. He disappeared from his position and reappeared next to her, crouching down to look at the street, they should be here any minute, he whispered. Right as he finished speaking, he tilted his head to the side to let the heel of her boot miss his face by a few centimeters. What are you doing here? She hissed in alarm, seeing the man dressed in a black version of his league uniform, he wore black pants and a black jacket with a hood over his face that had the added property of concealing his facial features. I was hoping to run into you actually, he said casually. Catwoman raised an eyebrow and smirked before taking a seat on a small slab next to the edge on the roof, crossing one leg over the other she rested her head on her palm. And what exactly do you need from me? Naruto smirked back and shrugged, nothing much, I just figured I'd take a chance and see if you'd like to go get a drink sometime. That must have surprised her as her smirk was gone, replaced by an incredulous look, she blinked a few times, trying to wrap her mind around what had just happened, it only took a few moments before she started chuckling softly, you waited out here, in the cold for who knows how long, just to ask me out for a drink. He nodded, pretty much, why? She asked with a little suspicion in her voice, for you to be here right now means you know what I am planning, how'd I know this isn't some plot for you to arrest me as soon as I try to steal? I would have apprehended you already, that was true. Catwoman hummed to herself, she was still trying to win over Batman but getting a free drink wouldn't be so bad, give me a reason to say yes, she challenged. I'll leave and let you do your thing here, he was willing to let her pull off a heist? Just like that? Fine, tomorrow night at the Iceberg Lounge, 9pm, she agreed. Naruto made a note of that in his phone and quickly texted Nightwing the details to let him do whatever he needed, sounds good, I'll see you there, as if he was a ghost his form disappeared from in front of her into thin air, she looked around to make sure he was really gone and turned her attention down below when the truck finally arrived. Deciding to think about her date later tonight, she put the goggles over her eyes and prepared her whip, she had diamonds to rob. Friday night came in the blink of an eye and Naruto was making his way to the Penguin's base of operations, he was dressed in his regular civilian clothing, not bothering to disguise himself as he didn't believe in the secret identity thing, even if someone knew who he was, what could they possibly do to him? Stepping inside. The sound of moderate volume music assaulted his ears, and many people were inside mingling about discussing something or another, he made his way to the frozen bar and ordered two drinks, leaving the money on the counter. A minute or so passed before his date arrived, Catwoman strutted over to him and sat down on the small stool provided and rested her elbow on the counter, already got the drinks ready I see. I figured you wouldn't be long so why wait? Cheers, they tapped their glasses together and downed the drink. Naruto found that Selena, as she told him to call her for the night, was actually pretty fun to be around, she was flirty, playful, and spoke what was on her mind, all qualities he found attractive in a woman, it wasn't long before the two made their way to another area of the lounge where the music was more upbeat and trendy, Naruto didn't put up any resistance as she led him by the hand to the dance floor and positioned his hands on her hips while she pressed her back to his chest and began to move to the music. While not much of a dancer himself, it was relatively easy to do so, it was basically the two dry humping each other in sensual ways going along with the music, he was sure Selena could feel his growing erection through her pants as she would look over at him with a coy smile and rub herself even harder. After an hour or so of dancing different songs he knew he had to move, she had her chest pressed to his with her hands wrapped around his neck and he moved his hands down until they were just a few inches away from her ass. Leaning in, he spoke, you wanna get out of here? She looked at him with a mischievous smile on her face and leaned forward until her mouth was right next to his ear. What makes you think I am easy enough to take home on the first date? I can tell you're just as pent up as I am, he shot back, still moving slightly along with her, besides, it doesn't have to go anywhere, also, 
I can make it worth your while in more ways than one. That piqued her interest, of course she knew one of the things he was talking about but the second? She had no clue and asked what it was. I can tell you who the man behind the bat mask is, he replied, he knew he had her at that moment, all pretexts of not wanting to seemingly left as she began contemplating it. It wouldn't bother you that I am essentially doing it for that bit of information? She asked. Naruto shook his head no, I told you, it's just fun for the two of us. Selena continued dancing, grinding, on him for the duration of the song and once it was finished pulled him out of the room and towards the front door, where to Loverboy? She asked. Naruto checked his phone and pulled up the information Nightwing had sent him, it was a receipt with the details of the stay, top floor room 3, Barbara would be scheduled to appear in an hour, inwardly he sighed at the shitshow that was about to happen and once again he thought that he should nt have shown up that night. Just under an hour later, Selena was mentally patting herself on the back for making the decision to agree, Naruto hadn't been full of hot air with his statement, and now she was full of him, she was on all fours on the bed, gripping the sheets for dear life while the blonde man behind her railed her, unknowingly ruining her for another man, for Batman. In that hour shed come three times and her makeup was smeared by the pleasurable tears that had formed when she was trying to throat him, so lost in her own lust and the sound of her ass clapping against her lover for the night, she never heard the door to their hotel room open. What the fuck is this? They heard, Selena's lust induced trance was snapped and she turned to see the commissioner's daughter sitting at the end of the hallway of their room, she quickly removed herself from Naruto and covered herself up with the sheets. Naruto meanwhile looked at Barbara with no emotion, just like he was paid to do. Are you going to answer me? The redhead continued with a tremble in her voice, the two could see she was trying to hold back tears, but it wasn't working, she started sniffling and the first tear fell, then the second until it was a steady stream. Selena looked towards the blonde with disbelief written all over her face, you didn't think it was important to mention you were seeing someone? She asked. Naruto glanced at her and nodded at her then the window, Catwoman scowled and quickly dressed herself before making her way past the heartbroken woman, not feeling like listening to his order. Why? Barbara whispered, why would you do this? Were you unhappy? Did I do something to you? Naruto sat down at the end of the bed and put his underwear and pants back on before turning his attention to the woman. No, you didn't do anything to me but you did to someone, I was hired to do this, he revealed. That only seemed to make the crying intensify, he had to watch for the next few minutes as the woman sobbed at the betrayal from what she thought was her boyfriend, so everything was a lie. He shook his head, I really did mean most of what I said, had I not known some of the things I do, I would have asked you out for real if given the chance, I truly don't care about the wheelchair thing, you're still a woman. Barbara stared at the ground. A broken look on her face as the reality that she'd been played set in, she didn't know what had been real between them or if everything was a lie, as she did this, Naruto made the call. I expect the rest of the money by tonight, was all he said before hanging up. How much? She muttered, excuse me. How much did this person pay you to do this to me? How much did it cost for you to agree to do something this cruel to someone disabled? She asked, now more angry than anything. Naruto sat quietly for a moment while on the outside he looked like he couldn't care less, on the inside he felt like garbage, two million dollars. Barbara's mouth dropped, for someone to drop that kind of money meant she must have pissed off someone powerful back in her days as Batgirl. Naruto stood up and resumed getting dressed until he was completely clothed once again, what goes around comes back around I suppose, he said as he made his way past her, leaving her alone in the room, it was a bit depressing, had she made better choices in the past this wouldn't have happened, perhaps there could have been a chance for this to be real. A week later at a mandatory meeting up at the watchtower, Naruto could feel the disapproving stares of some of the men and women in the back of his head from his seat, it seemed the word had gotten out, if he had to rate the person looking at him with the most anger it would probably be Vixen, as she didn't even try to hide the fact that she was mad. Excuse me, Superman began from atop the small platform he was standing on, I know there's been some, rumors going around but I am hoping we can save that until after the league business has been handled, he announced. Everyone reluctantly looked away from him and back at the screen for the briefing, what happened next shocked everyone, but none more than Naruto and Batman, when the Dark Knight turned the screen on to begin whatever they were going to talk about, their jaws dropped. On screen was footage of Naruto giving it to Catwoman in their hotel room. Motherfucker, Naruto muttered, loud enough to where only Flash who was sitting next to him, and Superman with his super hearing could hear him. The screen was turned off and all the attention was on him once more, if looks could kill, the Dark Knight's stare would have put him six feet underground. Talk, he ordered, Naruto leaned back in his seat and crossed his arms, I don't know what you want me to say, I didn't do that, you think I wanted all of you to see me butt nakes having sex? 
We've heard of your less than desirable tendencies but overlooked them since they never affected the league business, you sleeping with league members, some taken, and cheating on the commissioner's daughter has begun to affect the league. Naruto could feel everyone minus a few begin to turn on him and realized he needed to defuse the situation. What better way to do that than to attack someone else? Why are you all looking at me with disapproval? Since my intimate moment has just been exposed to everyone, why don't we expose everyone then? Let's see if you're all singing the same tune then, he shot back. Oh shit, Flash muttered next to him, knowing shit was about to go down. Batman, you wanna point fingers so bad, let's point it at you. Do they know that you slept with Barbara while she was dating Nightwing? Now wide eyes turned to Batman with shock clear in their faces, you fucked your own protege's girlfriend and knocked her up, he revealed, twisting the metaphorical knife some more. He then turned his attention to Green Arrow who was looking at him with anger, Arrow, you finally put it together I see, your girlfriend cheated on you but you're more mad at me? John. You're always hard on me for whoring around but Shayera, who betrayed the League and the Earth might I remind you all, was welcomed back with open arms after a little bit of time like she hadn't sold us out. Flash stood up with his hands making a calm down motion, okay okay why don't we all just take a breather all right? He suggested trying to get things under control. Tisk. Huntress, he called out to the black and purple clad woman, she too looked at him with some anger but raised an eyebrow when he singled her out, did you know the League keeps tabs on you? They want to make sure you never get your hands on Mandragora, they know where he is at all times and make sure to move him whenever you get too close, that's right, they're protecting your daddy's killer, he revealed. One by one he went, airing out everyone's dirty laundry until Arrow shot at him, he easily dodged it forcing the hero behind to have to move, that set off a chain of events as Huntress, angry both at him and the information she'd been told, threw a punch out of anger at the Dark Knight. That first attack set off a minor rumble between everyone in the meeting room, Naruto maneuvered his way off to the side with Flash, both watching the chaos unfold. You know they're gonna suspend you for this right? He asked, eating an apple. Probably, once they're done trying to kill each other. It was Nightwing wasn't it? Flash asked, I can't think of anyone who would want something like this to happen to someone unless they'd been hurt badly too, from what you said about Batman, it wasn't hard to figure out. Naruto had to hand it to the man, for all his childishness, he could use his head when needed, he didn't verbally answer but he didn't need to, Flash knew. While everyone was busy fighting or trying to get things under control, Naruto disappeared from the watchtower, reappearing on the roof of his building. Pulling out his phone he dialed a number and waited until the person picked up. All right Lex, job's done, he spoke into the phone, you know that won't be enough to cause them to split up right? Possibly not but there's a chance, if it fails it's not my problem, I was paid to air out their dirty laundry and I've done that. That you have, good work, I'll be sure to recommend you to some of my colleagues, Luther replied, I'll wire the money to your account, pleasure doing business. Naruto hung up and a moment later received a deposit of $8 million, he knew it wouldn't be enough to split the league so he agreed to take on the job for the man, easy money, just as he was about to make his way to his place his phone vibrated again and a frown formed on his face when he saw who was calling. So we're all in agreement. Batman asked the crowd in front of him, those who had been present at the last league meeting were once again sitting down, though some members had to be seated away from one another due to the events of the last one. It would appear so, Superman commented and was about to dismiss everyone when one of the doors opened, revealing one more person, the speedster clad in red and yellow coughed into his hand nervously as all eyes turned to him. Awkwardly, he began maneuvering himself through the gaps between the seats mumbling apologies as he did so, sorry sorry, excuse me, damn that's a nasty black eye, sorry sorry. Batman watched the man through narrowed eyes, annoyed with the sudden interruption and tardiness of one of the founding members of the League. Superman meanwhile shook his head in displeasure, wishing the man could take things seriously and at least be on time to important meetings like this one, now that the man was here, they would need him to vote, due to how close the votes actually were the man would be able to change the result. Sorry I am late everyone, Flash said as he took his seat, I was at Naruto's place with some of the guys catching the game and lost track of time. Since Flash has finally decided to join us well need his input, Batman announced, Flash glanced around the room, scanning everyone present. Shouldn't we wait for Naruto? He's a member too, he asked. Superman shook his head, as did a few of the members sitting down, unfortunately Flash, this meeting is concerning him, the events over the past few days have led us to a vote regarding his status in the league. His status, what do you mean? Flash asked, though in the back of his head he had a slight idea as to what this meeting could be about. Martian Manhunter coughed into his hand twice to clear his throat and stood next to the two other league members, 
his behavior in the past has led some to question his motives and drive to be a hero, so now we're having a vote on whether he should be suspended and for how long, he explained, the large majority here has voted in favor of doing so, the duration of said suspension is more evenly split and your vote could impact it. Flash frowned at the Mont's words and leaned back into his seat while crossing his arms, I don't know what you guys are talking about regarding his status he said, using air quotes on the word status, he helps whenever he's needed, hasn't killed anyone despite wanting to, and even risks his life fighting super-powered metahumans for pay that, in my honest opinion, doesn't match the risks. Some of the league members sitting near him that had voted for the lowest time nodded their heads as some of them had the same feelings regarding the blonde, whatever the lowest amount of time available is, that's what I am voting for, he finished, standing up for his boy. You realize the man incited a riot? Batman asked with a pointed glare. You pointed the finger at him and he pointed them back, Flash argued, those around were once again surprised to see one of their most easy-going members barking back at what most considered the most intimidating figure of the league, besides, if I recall correctly, someone shot an arrow which kicked off the entire thing. Batman's glare intensified but he didn't comment on it after he felt Superman put a hand on his shoulder, he turned to the man to see him shake his head no. The count is now tied at half a year, well reconvene in an hour with more members to get their input, dismissed. As the leaguers made their way out, Everyone began talking amongst themselves about either the meeting or any other relevant topics to them, none were as vocal however, as one green arrow. It's about time the kid got punished if you ask me, he began, kid has no respect for anyone. Canary, who was walking alongside him silently with her hands in her jacket pockets couldn't help the scoff from escaping her, oh and you do? She whispered with a bitter tone. Green arrow looked over at her with an angry look and responded, what's with the tone? You spread your legs for him too don't think I've forgotten, he shot back in an angry whisper. The blonde woman's jaw clenched hard enough that anyone who saw her would instantly know she was furious, in an amazing display of self-control she managed to whisper back, it wouldn't have happened if you h and nt been fucking that little slut at your place, I did it while drunk but you knew exactly what you were doing, multiple times. I admitted it was a mistake, Arrow replied, though his words didn't seem as strong as before, you have to let that go. The only effect those words had on the woman was making her angrier, the way he said it, as if it was no big deal that had fucked another woman behind her back, as if it was on the same level of spilling a drink on someone's carpet, how she didn't let out a scream on the spot was unknown to her but she mentally patted herself on the back for the restraint she showed. Canary took a calming breath and walked off, not wanting to be around the man any longer, if he really saw cheating as something so trivial it could be shaken off then shed test that theory, if it's really that light of an issue then let's see how you like it. Having made up her mind she made for her room and began planning, Arrow wanted to play. Then shed play, it took next to no time for her to decide who would be helping her with this, there was only one person that Arrow seemingly hated more than anyone else in the league, an amused smile creeped up on her face as the image of her fellow blonde popped into her mind. Shed heard through the grapevine that during the time that had spent with Barbara they'd been intimate, whether it was genuine or not was a topic of debate but one thing stood out, according to her sources, the woman who should nt feel anything from the waist down managed to actually feel him, if he was big enough for the woman to get her dead senses back she could only imagine what he could do for her. Her smile widened even more at the thought, all she had to do was plan accordingly and shed have the time of her life while pissing the fuck out of Green Arrow, it was a win-win. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Naruto sighed at this, an action that seemed to annoy the red-headed woman before him, are you sure? Barbara blinked, am I sure? Yes I am sure, will you do it or not? Naruto rubbed the back of his neck and Barbara knew he was on the fence about something, what's wrong? She asked. Look, from what I understand, to be frank this whole thing is your fault, he said, Barbara's eyes widened at the accusation but didn't get a chance to get a rebuttal as Naruto continued, it was your actions that led Nightwing to do what he did, you cheated on him, he got you cheated on, from a neutral standpoint I think your actions were worse due to what happened after, why not just leave things as they are? You're even, it's only gonna get worse. The woman frowned in anger, both at the accusations and the fact that she knew he was right, her getting pregnant was an added blow to the betrayal, but the more vindictive side of her wouldn't let things end like this. He paid you two million, he'll pay you double for your help, she argued back. That stopped Naruto in his tracks, four million dollars, she nodded. What exactly do you want me to do? He asked, now interested in what she had to say, had tried to stop the toxicity between them but it didn't go as planned, now there was four million dollars being dangled in front of his face, who was he to turn her down without at least hearing her out? The wheelchair-bound woman shook her head in disappointment at how easy it was to get him to throw away the small bit of morality he was showing, I need you to help me get Nightwing back. Naruto sighed and couldn't help but roll his eyes at the woman's response. Okay. What exactly do you have in mind that you're willing to cough up four million dollars? We're going to get back at Nightwing, how? He asked with a bad feeling in the pit of his stomach. You're going to put your skills to work with Starfire, she revealed. Naruto's eyes widened, Starfire? Nightwing's girlfriend? That one? Barbara nodded, that's right, hell catch the two of you in the act and ill make sure he sees. Can no one in this city just be loyal? He asked himself under his breath, okay so what's the plan? Starfire's species are vastly different from ours, their views on love are different, from what she's told me they have a soulmate that they're emotionally connected to, and in this case it's Nightwing, however, that doesn't mean they don't have very strong physical attraction to other people, she explained. After making sure he was paying attention she continued. If you haven't noticed, she's sent you some very knowing looks in the past, she's physically attracted to you, and the fact that she's still not completely aware of Earth's customs will work to your favor, she finished. It doesn't make you feel like shit that you're planning to not only ruin Nightwing again, but this time you're also going to include an innocent girl in it? Naruto asked, clearly flabbergasted. The crippled woman shot him a look of loathing, did you think about that when you fucked me for money? Naruto opened his mouth to respond but closed it immediately, she had a point. That's what I thought, Naruto's shoulders sagged slightly and he exhaled in defeat, go on. Nightwing has a job coming up in two months that's gonna keep him away for another month or so, use these two months to get close to her and when he's out, you strike, she ordered as she pulled out her phone and asked for his bank details. Naruto ran his hand down his face in exasperation but complied, money was money after all, so what? I just fuck her and have him find out somehow. The wheelchair-bound woman shook her head no, hell be walking in on you guys, she said, giving him a pointed look, reminding him of how Shed rolled in on them while he was balls deep in Catwoman. After the first half of the money was deposited in his account the woman pointed at the door, making it clear she wanted him out, it was kind of strange that this was the same woman that would cling to him to not leave and now here she was brushing him aside like he was broccoli she didn't order. It was a damn shame, if he hadn't known about her tryst with Batman he really would have liked to continue seeing her, but the way she was now. Barbara, he called out from under the doorframe, she turned her head slightly to stare at him but didn't reply, she just waited for him to speak so he could leave, I told this to Nightwing the night he hired me and I am gonna tell you too, you're sick, please see a therapist. Having nothing more to say, he made his way out of her place and disappeared from view, he reappeared back at his own place and mentally began going over everything he knew about Starfire, she was slightly awkward due to still not getting acclimated with Earth's customs, apart from that the only other times he's interacted with her is when he had a job to do with her which usually ended rather quickly. Barbara's words replayed in his head and looking back, he definitely did remember some suggestive looks from the woman but at the time he figured his mind was messing with him, now though, he could definitely see this attraction that Barbara was talking about. Heading to one of the rooms that doubled as an office, he opened his laptop and added Barbara's name and job to his spreadsheet, she sat just under Lex Luthor and had $2 million added in his cash account as well as in the account's receivable account, after doing this he put the computer away and headed out, he needed to do a bit of scouting. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
It had been two months since the incident with Naruto at the hotel and it seemed that one night was all it took for the consequences of their actions to manifest, she had wanted to seek the blonde out but over the past two months, she had only seen glimpses of him, from what she had managed to figure out, he was hunting someone or something of the sort. She didn't know exactly how she would say it but after the talk with Bruce, Shed find the blonde and let him know the news, whether he stuck around or not was of no concern to her, at first Shed been shocked, angry, and even scared but over time she found herself excited, the only thing she had to do now was let Bruce know, they hadn't been together in months so she knew he couldn't be the cause of her situation. Part of her wondered if the aloof man would be upset, he refused to show too much emotion and still kept her at arm's length, maybe this would show him. When she arrived at the small table set outside of a small coffee shop she found the man already seated, staring at his phone before glancing around. Bruce, she greeted Selena, I haven't heard from you in some time, he replied with a slightly upset tone. The woman shrugged and sat down across from him, neither party spoke for a moment, both feeling out the other, soon it was Selena that ended up breaking the silence. I've been busy, a new development has come up that's taken up most of my time, she said, trying to keep the slight nervousness out of her voice, she thought this would be easy but now sitting across from the man that Shed coveted for so long she wasn't so sure. New development? Bruce asked, on the outside he looked calm, but on the inside he was everything but, he had a feeling he knew exactly what this development was and who was behind it, how could he forget? Selena nodded, I am just going to come right out and say it, you and I haven't seen each other in months and in that time I had a fling with someone now I am pregnant. To her surprise the man didn't show any expression of shock or anger like Shed expected, he narrowed his eyes, shook his head and stood up. The tab has been paid for, he said before making his way out. Selena watched him leave and though she was partially sad that what they could have had had gone out the window, another part was relieved, now the only thing left to do was tell the father and see what he wanted to do, if he wanted to stick around Shed be open to it, that didn't mean they were together, not by a long shot but she wouldn't deny him the right to see their child, if he chose not to stick around she wouldn't care either, one way or another Shed be happy with her baby. A month later unaware of what was happening in another part of town, Naruto was ready to make his move, over the past three months had been studying Starfire, her mannerisms, way of being, anything to help him get to where he needed to be, had shown up to their house a few times under the guise of needing a place to rest after a job or simply wanting to stop by and visit. While there he would very subtly keep an eye on Starfire to see how she reacted to him, as expected she would send him lustful looks whenever she thought he and Nightwing weren't looking. Any time the two were within a few feet of each other Naruto would experiment by walking past her a bit closely, accidental touches on the arms or hips as he passed by her and fortunately she would do it back. Jokes told by him resulted in her touching his arms or patting his leg but keeping her hand there longer than would be appropriate, don't get him wrong, the attention and positive reception he received didn't make him feel like shit any less, knowing that Nightwing was about to get fucked over by Barbara again made him feel terrible but four million was a lot of money. The only person he could say he would turn down any amount of money to screw over was Flash, the man had his back when he needed it and always went out of his way to stick up for him in the tower. He snapped out of his thoughts and prepared himself, Nightwing had left just under a month and according to Barbara would be back today, in that month that the hero had been gone, Naruto hadn't been idle and had gone on regular patrols with the woman, he accompanied her since he technically couldn't do it officially due to his suspension but this was pretty much just hanging out. Luckily, Shed invited him over today just to relax and to thank him for keeping her company, he was pretty sure she had another reason but it worked out for him either way, it took next to no time at all to reach her place with his powers, knocking on the door he was greeted by the sight of the woman in her hero costume, no doubt having gone on one quick look out before taking the rest of the day off. He had to admit, when it came to costumes hers was definitely one of his favorites, her purple outfit allowed a nice portion of her legs to show below the skirt and it had a delightful window in the chest area giving him a view of her cleavage. Hey star he greeted, the woman smiled and brought him in for a hug, running her hands up and down his back for a moment before letting go, their eyes locked for a moment before she turned away and had him follow her to the living room, he took off his jacket and hung it on one of the small coat racks they had set up next to the door. Naruto, thank you for coming, she told him as she sat down on the couch and patted the spot next to her, accepting her invitation he sat down and leaned back into the couch, enjoying how he sank into the cushion slightly, he heard the TV turn on at a low volume and felt himself tilt slightly as Starfire scooted closer to him. He glanced over at her and saw she wasn't staring at the TV but rather, at him, do I have something on my face? Starfire giggled and shook her head, Naruto, how much do you know about my people? More specifically, the Tamaranian race. Instantly Barbara's words rang out in his head, not much honestly, 
I've never really done research on other races unless it's for a job. The woman nodded, seemingly expecting that response. To keep it brief our concept of love and affection is much different than the way your people see it. I have the utmost love for Dick and he has my heart and soul, but I will confess, I also have a very strong attraction to you, she revealed. It took a lot of strength to not chuckle at her admission of loving Dick even though he knew she didn't mean it that way. It isn't uncommon back home for people to act on the attraction, unless I'm mistaken you seem to have an attraction to me as well do you not? She asked bluntly. Yeah, I just never acted on it because I figured you didn't see me that way, he lied. She smiled and placed a hand on his thigh, an action that he reciprocated which elicited a sultry smile from her. No more words were said between the two as Starfire quickly closed the gap between them, pressing her lips onto his, an electric feeling passed through the woman as their tongues met and she quickly brought her hands up to cup the blonde's face. Naruto wasn't idle while she showed her affection and quickly pulled the woman onto his lap, her shapely ass began to grind on him subconsciously, a clear sign that she was enjoying the action and wanted more, who was he to deny her? In one swift move he ran his finger up her front and made a small incision on her shirt, the fabric easily split and revealed a beautiful set of breasts to him, Starfire looked down at him with her glowing green eyes and bit her lip, anxious for him to continue making her feel good, he smirked and kissed her neck slowly, making sure to leave a mark before making his way down to her right breast and taking her nipple into his mouth. The woman's moans were a delightful sound to him and even through his pants he could begin to feel the fluid that began emanating from her. Taking a break from the right tit he moved over to the left all while moving his hand around her back and trailing down until he had a handful of her ass. Starfire gripped the back of his head, trying to pull him closer to her and held back a squeal of delight when she felt his teeth lightly pinch her already sensitive nipple, just as the pleasure was intensifying it suddenly stopped, causing her to look down at him with some frustration. What's the matter? She asked Naruto didn't verbally respond, instead he tossed her over his shoulder eliciting an excited squeak from her and made his way over to her bedroom, walking inside and closing the door behind them he playfully tossed her on the bed and smirked when he saw her begin to pull her skirt along with her panties down. Starfire looked at him with an excited and impatient look then proceeded to bring her legs closer to her while spreading them apart. Naruto, I need you now, she begged, not needing to hear more he stripped himself naked. Getting on the bed and lining himself up with her extraterrestrial entrance, Naruto let out a small hum of pleasure as he felt her walls tighten up around him the moment he sheathed himself inside her, likewise Starfire let out a sensual moan as she felt herself get stretched further than she'd ever been before. You're tighter than I imagined Naruto complimented as he took hold of her hips. Starfire smiled as she began to slowly thrust back at him, letting him know she wanted nothing more than for him to get started. Naruto smirked to himself as the light orange-skinned beauty matching his thrusts closed her eyes and bit her lip to try and keep her moans down. It didn't do her much good as he was hitting spots so deep she couldn't hold her voice back. Fuck. She yelled after one particularly deep thrust, Naruto, I am gonna. She didn't finish her sentence, instead she locked her legs around his waist and moved her hips faster, he saw the glazed look in her eyes as she tried to speed up her orgasm, part of him wanted to chuckle at her desperation and delay it but he stopped himself, it was clear Shed never experienced sex like this before. Naruto could feel his own release coming and he wanted to have her seeing stars, he wanted EHR to see Tamarin, he rolled her over so she was laying on all fours, grabbing a handful of her hair and pulling slightly in order to get her head up he sped up, pounding away at her like they were on their honeymoon. Don't stop Naruto, please don't stop, I am so close, Starfire cried, thrusting back trying to match his pace. Wouldn't dream of it, he hammered away at her for five more minutes before it finally happened, Starfire began to convulse slightly her mouth opening into a silent scream as her orgasm finally hit, while she was on cloud 9, Naruto made sure to keep his pace to add to the pleasure she was feeling, if one were to see the alien woman at that moment they'd see bright green eyes glowing brighter than ever before along with her mouth wide open. Unfortunately, or fortunately depending on which of the two you asked, it wasn't done yet. Like Starfire, his release finally hit as well, just as hers was dying down, thrusting in as far as he could go he blew his load, the feeling of filling up a beautiful woman like Starfire never failed to leave him with a heightened sense of accomplishment, the fact that she was the first Martian had blown a load and added to the experience, he stayed buried inside of her for a minute or two, filling her to the brim with his seed. He could feel Starfire's womanhood pulsing, almost as if trying to milk every last drop from him, he briefly wondered what the chances of getting an alien pregnant were but had deal with it when the time came, Naruto never thought he'd be using his power to imagine a baby out of existence but if need be. Finally his release came to an end and he pulled himself out of her, inch by inch he removed himself, having to fight against her walls who were adamant that he stayed buried there, 
Her pussy was still convulsing slightly once he was out, opening and closing slightly, no doubt still sensitive from her orgasm. Like Shed done earlier he made his way over until he was on top of her, well? How are you feeling? He asked. Starfire slowly turned her head to him and brought his head down for a kiss, their two lips mushed together slowly for a second before parting, amazing, she replied tiredly but with a smile on her face. Naruto smiled and despite just having ejaculated in her, the sight presented to him was too much and had him back to full length in seconds, Starfire's eyes widened at the feeling of her walls being stretched once more and looked back at him. Wait I am not. Fuck she moaned as he slowly began penetrating her again, her face fell into the mattress and her body was limp, she could do nothing but let the muscular blonde she was attracted to have his way with her. She once again squealed in surprise when he picked her up, sat at the edge of the bed then proceeded to impale her while her back was pressed against his chest. As he continued fucking her with her exposed body facing the bedroom door he heard his phone go off in his pants pocket, Starfire either didn't hear it or didn't care as she reached around to wrap an arm around his head to encourage him to continue what he was doing. Using his power he willed the phone in his hand and saw a message from Barbara that read Showtime, instantly he remembered what the plan was and braced himself, the Tamaranian woman didn't seem to hear but he did, the front door had opened and someone was getting closer. Everything but his release seemed to stop as Nightwing opened the bedroom door and stared at the scene before him in shock, Starfire had frozen and was no doubt staring back at the man with wide eyes, seemed maybe she hadn't told him about the whole Tamaranian attraction thing. At that exact moment, some of his seed began spilling out of her no doubt due to the amount that was already in there being pushed out, neither of the three people in the room said a word until one of the Mons nightsticks made its way into his hand. Starfire disconnected from him and dodged the swing. That bitch Naruto thought as she left him to take the blow, at least that's what would have happened had the stick not disappeared a moment before it reached him. In a split second he was clothed again, jacket and all and began making his way to the door. Don't move, Nightwing ordered, we're not pretending that didn't happen asshole. Naruto turned back and looked at him with the same look he gave Barbara the night he she caught him fucking Catwoman, Nightwing, don't take it personally, ask her about her people's customs, it seems to me this happened because of a lack of communication between the two of you, maybe some counseling could help, he said as he continued to the door. Just before leaving the bedroom he paused and turned back once more, also, Barbara sends her regards. Those words had Nightwing's eyes widened to a comical degree and the blonde was sure he was going to turn completely red with how much blood was flowing to his head, by the way, I am not working for either of you two anymore, the two of you are twisted beyond belief and I don't really want to be in the middle of it anymore. Having said what he needed to, he made his way out of their place ignoring the yelling that had begun to ensue behind him, pulling out his phone he sent a text message to Barbara and within minutes a notification appeared on his phone. After returning home and taking a shower to clean himself from the sweat had built up during his tryst with Starfire, he got dressed in some casual clothing and brought his laptop to the couch, opening up his spreadsheet he made the final adjustments to close Barbara's account now that the job was complete. The thought of the woman led him to think about the shit show that was Barbara and Dick's relationship, or rather lack thereof, those two had the most fucked up relationship had ever seen, and had seen some pretty bad ones, he couldn't help but wonder what things would have been like if she hadn't thrown it back for Batman. That thought took him down another path in his mind, Barbara was, from what had seen and experienced, a wonderful woman, one that he couldn't fathom being capable of cheating on someone. He didn't blame Nightwing for turning out the way he did because it was definitely fucked up but their actions afterwards most definitely guaranteed them a spot in hell, they have a first class ticket down the moment they die, he was sure of it. Now he wasn't a marriage counselor but what they had wasn't healthy, he was sure even their normal relationship would have blown up if this was what was beneath the surface, he exhaled once and got back to work, ridding himself of those thoughts, the jobs were done, had been paid, and he wouldn't be working for either of them again. As he continued organizing his ledger he couldn't help but look at some of the people that had hired him in the past. Oracle, Nightwing, Flash, Luther. There was plenty more of course, he had to scroll for a few seconds to see every name but those were the ones that had raked him in the most money, he wasn't a religious man but he did thank some deities that some high rollers of the league were his clients, thinking about the league did put a slight frown on his face however. Had been suspended from league activities for six months and was halfway through his sentence, if he didn't have this side gig he was sure he'd be in trouble, still, he was halfway through his suspension and things were looking good. Scrolling to the very bottom he saw the total amount had made since he began taking jobs, and the amount sitting in his account at the moment, he looked up from the screen and took a look around his place, it was nice but had made enough money that he could afford a nicer place, not only that but something in his gut told him it was time to move. Call it intuition but he felt like he'd need the space. 
That and the idea of having a lavish home somewhere sounded pretty good to him. The next hour or so was spent online looking at different properties, there was one in Vegas for $4 million that looked pretty good, more rooms than he needed, two stories, a very large driveway with a fountain in the front and a large pool in the back with a fireplace and all, as he was getting ready to contact the real estate agent that was helping sell the home, he stopped when a knock was heard from his front door. Opening the front door caused him to pause and frown in confusion when he saw the person on the other side, of all the people he was expecting to see, Shayera Hole was not one of them. The woman was dressed in regular clothing consisting of light blue jeans and a white t-shirt, her wings were clear on display from her back and he couldn't help but wonder if she had to cut holes in the back of the shirt, that would be a waste, despite being out of costume, her trusty mace was still in hand ready for combat if need be. Naruto raised an eyebrow in her direction wondering what exactly she was doing here, the two didn't interact much outside of league business and the altercation in the watchtower where he brought up her betrayal made almost certain that they wouldn't speak again. Hello Naruto. Do you mind if I come in? I'd rather people not take any more photos, she said pointing outward where a flock of people on their phones could be seen. Standing aside he motioned for her to enter and closed the door. Nice place you got here, she complimented as she walked deeper into the room while looking around. Thanks, would you like anything to drink? He offered, they might not be best friends or anything but he would still be a good host to whoever visited. Shayera hummed for a moment before looking back at him and nodding once. Water if you don't mind, she requested, you might also want to get yourself something too, that made him pause on the way to the kitchen, what did she mean by that? Soon he returned with two cups of water which he placed on his small table, taking a seat on the couch he nodded his head for her to join him. Not that I mind you being here, especially after the debacle a while ago, I am always open to getting to know league members better but, what are you doing here? Naruto asked. Shayera took a gulp of her drink and placed it back on the table before answering. Don't worry about what happened, you weren't wrong and I do think I was let off easy for what happened, I know some still hold resentment against me and I am okay with that, I deserve it but if you're willing to give me a chance to show you I am not that bad I'd be grateful, she told him. Naruto was surprised, he hadn't expected this either but it was definitely a welcome event, I'd like that. Shayera smiled sincerely for a moment before her facial expression changed once again, while I'd like to say that's all I am here for, the truth is I was sent here by the league, she began they caught wind of your latest, activity and so did the media, some media sites have picked up on it and it's reflecting badly on the league. Naruto nodded, he expected they would if they heard about it, still, that didn't answer why she was there and he made his concern vocal. Well, there's no easy way to say it but I've basically been put in charge of keeping an eye on you, you know, make sure you aren't up to anything that could potentially make the league look worse. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise for a split second at the news relayed to him, hold on, you're telling me I am on parole? He asked in a relatively calm tone. Pretty much, Naruto leaned back into the couch cushion and looked up towards the ceiling, well I certainly didn't see this coming. You're taking this a lot better than I thought you would honestly, she admitted. He shrugged, I mean I didn't see it coming but I can't say I am too surprised they do something like this, so does this mean I have to tell you where I am going at all times or what? To his relief Shayera shook her head, no nothing like that, I am just going to pop in from time to time and make sure you're not fucking something up, though at this point I don't know how much worse things could really get for you, she joked. Naruto chuckled at the quip but nodded, he was already suspended, what were they gonna do? Suspend him more. So, what were you doing before I got here? She asked curiously, trying to peek over at the laptop screen, unfortunately for her it had been idle long enough for the screen to turn black. The man grabbed the laptop and placed it back on his lap, letting his fellow leaguer see what was on the screen. Shayera let out a whistle at the images she was seeing, damn, that's a nice place and it costs more than double the average lifetime salary of someone in the US, the league pays you that much? She probed. Naruto shook his head quickly, hell no, why do you think I take side jobs? You think I do some of the things I do just for kicks? He questioned. Shayera leaned back and turned her body slightly to face him, her wings bent slightly which he noticed but it seemed not to bother her. Maybe they weren't as sensitive as they looked. Actually I've been curious for a while now, what led you to do what you did to Oracle and Nightwing for that matter? Well you heard what happened between them back in the day right? The woman nodded, how could she forget? The small riot that ensued up there wasn't something that she would be forgetting anytime soon, the information shed her just prior less so. Well to keep it brief, Nightwing wanted revenge for what Batman and Barbara did to him so he hired me. Then Barbara decided she wouldn't take that and hired me too to get back at him. Naruto rubbed a hand down his face as he remembered trying to convince both of them that it was a bad idea, 
I tried telling them they were sick and needed help but they wouldn't hear it, they offered me millions of dollars basically to seduce someone so I figured, easy money. Shayera nodded to herself, while she definitely wouldn't do that to someone she could see how the young man was swayed, I understand that but I do have to ask, will you screw anyone over for enough money? She'd be a hypocrite if she began talking about trust but after her own incident with her people she was doing her best to earn everyone's trust and respect, she had to see where Naruto's head was and if he was someone she could depend on. No, there's a couple people I wouldn't do anything to, for example there's no amount of money you could pay me to screw over Flash, dude has had my back since I joined the league and didn't care about my age, never called me kid, and even lent me money without asking for it back when I needed it, he explained, if you've had my back like that you can expect me to have yours. Well at least he has some morals, even if they only apply to certain people, she thought to herself. To Naruto's surprise the woman didn't leave after that, instead she stuck around for a few simply getting to know him, turns out had been wrong about her, every time he saw her she always had a rather upset look on her face unless she was around Green Lantern but she was actually pretty easy going, she had a sense of humor similar to his and took the time to ask him questions about himself while answering any he might have had about her. Overall, she was quite pleasant to be around, in the end she even offered to go with him to check out the house after had set up an appointment to see it in person a month from now, after finding the man on multiple social media websites they saw that he was a fan of heroes and the man whose home he was selling was as well. According to her it would be relatively easy to get the price to drop if there were two heroes there to meet him, perhaps had been wrong about her, by the time she left it had gotten dark outside and Shed told him Shed be back in a couple of days and to stay out of trouble. He had to scoff at that. What could possibly happen within the next few days that would result in him getting in trouble? Lil did he know how soon had spoken. About two weeks later he got his answer, as he and Shayera were discussing something that had happened earlier in the week the sound of people screaming in terror could be heard from outside, that was followed by loud explosions that rattled the entire city, despite being on suspension, Naruto ran outside with Hot Girl to see what the commotion was. A large shadow quickly began to cover the city and in seconds Hot Girl was calling out to the league, as she did so Naruto looked up to see a large ship with two red lightning bolt shaped letter S on the side of it, it wasn't alone either, soon a couple hundred more filled the sky and began descending. Of all people to be attacking us it's the Schutzstaffel. I thought that organization went under after Hitler killed himself, he muttered out loud. Hawk Girl didn't get a chance to say anything as in an instant doors began opening on the ships and thousands of uniformed men began jumping out, shooting at the citizens down below. Fortunately at that moment reinforcements in the form of the league and soon the soldiers began getting dropped one by one. Just as Naruto was about to call the Nazi invasion a total flop two more people made their presence known, in a small attempt at intimidation two people crash landed a few hundred feet away from the blonde. The first was a woman in a black and red suit with the two S's on her chest, she had blonde hair that was styled up with two long bangs hanging down the front of her face, the woman had an impassive look on her face with her arms crossed as she stared at her surroundings. The man next to her was almost an exact copy of Green Arrow with the only notable difference being that his suit was black and red, the same as the woman's. A Nazi supergirl in Green Arrow huh? Strange combination, he commented, getting their attention. The two Nazis turned their attention to him and took a step forward before the woman spoke, who are you supposed to be? She demanded. Naruto raised an eyebrow at her, you came to my planet, began attacking, and then ask who I am. Pretty rude if you ask me. The least you could do is introduce yourselves, he shot back. The woman narrowed her eyes at him and a second later they began to glow red, hum, I suppose it doesn't matter who you are, you'll be dead all the same, the sooner we kill you the sooner we get what I need. Any normal person would have been dead the next moment as two red lasers shot out of her eyes at breakneck speeds, however, he wasn't a normal person, with but a tilt of his head the lasers passed harmlessly by him much to the annoyance of the woman. The green arrow look alike pulled out an arrow from his quiver and with great speed shot it off at him. If her attack didn't work, what makes you think yours will have any more effect? Naruto muttered to himself again, before the arrow got within a foot of him it disappeared into thin air, the two invaders frowned in confusion and just as the woman was about to speak she was blown aside. Naruto smirked at his handy work and couldn't help but laugh at the expression on the evil woman's face when she turned to see her partner's face badly burned on the left side. What did you do? She snarled as she saw Arrow hold his face in pain. Nothing much, just made it to where the arrow showed up next to his face instead of mine, that's all, he replied in a happy tone. Overgirl snarled and was about to attack but was forced to duck as a league member flew overhead, carrying three unconscious Nazi bodied over his shoulder. So you want to tell me what exactly you guys are hoping to achieve? 
Whatever it is, it's not going very well for you, Naruto told her. Overgirl responded by firing two more beams of heat at him, though unlike last time, the blonde stood in place and let the two beams fire straight through his shoulder, his face remained unchanged, the amused look never leaving his face even as smoke erupted from the two wounds. The woman narrowed her eyes at him and in a fraction of a second appeared in front of him with a hand drawn back, ready to remove his head from his body, still the blonde stayed put in his spot and simply watched as her right hand made its way closer to his face until it connected. While she was very powerful and no sane person would stand still and let a blow from her connect, he wasn't worried, his head didn't move even an inch to the side as her fist dug itself in his cheek, the ground below him rumbled and began cracking until it became a large crater in the ground due to the force of the blow. Before Overgirl could comprehend what had happened, her head snapped back with tremendous force, propelling her into the air, what was more alarming was the fact that her body felt weak the moment his hand made contact with her, before she could go flying into the sky Naruto jumped up and gripped her by the ankle and slammed her back down into the street. In an impressive display of resiliency Overgirl got back up and glared at him though the panting and blood coming out of her mouth reduced the desired effect. What are you? There's no way you're a regular human, are you a Kryptonian as well? She probed. His body was too sturdy to be that or a regular human, the force behind his punch was otherworldly, plus the added effect of making her feel weak upon contact made her believe he couldn't be human. Me? Kryptonian? No, I am completely human, he responded. That's impossible, no normal human could damage me like this, she said angrily as she blasted forward towards him. Naruto shook his head and reached forward with a hand, before she realized what had happened, his hand was gripping her by the throat and holding her up in the air. Overgirl could feel the power beginning to drain from her and flailed her legs wildly trying to connect with him in order to be freed, unfortunately for her his grip was tight and arrow had already been apprehended by the winged woman. This is impossible, she choked out, our forces have been unbeatable, a lowly human should nt be able to do this, you've even healed the wounds from my attack, that should nt be possible. Naruto laughed at the woman's feeble attempts to extract info from him, he had to commend her though, even as her breathing was restricted and she was sure to pass out any moment now she was still refusing to give up. Your forces are unbeatable you say? He questioned, your forces were weak, the strongest force in the universe is imagination. Overgirl narrowed her watery eyes at him, defiance still present, what nonsense are you talking about? Just by imagining that my body was more resistant than the strongest metal in the universe, it became true, that's why your attack didn't do anything to me, he explained, you thought that my wounds could heal on their own after I didn't fall from your beams, because that's what you believed it became true, even now I gave my hand similar properties to that or kryptonite. As he spoke, Overgirl's eyes widened in disbelief at the power he commanded. Anything I imagine, anything at all, becomes reality, those were the last words the woman was able to process before she was finally claimed by darkness and went limp in his hand, releasing his hold on her throat, he let her drop to the ground and surveyed the area, those that had seen their leaders taken down so easily were easy pickings for the league members that had shown up. It wasn't until 10 minutes after everything was all said and done that Batman, Superman, Flash, and Wonder Woman arrived on the scene, Shayera, who had a still unconscious and tied up dark arrow thrown over her shoulder turned to look at him. I don't think they'll mind you helping out considering the situation, she told him. Naruto shrugged, it doesn't make a difference to me either way, I saw that I could do something to help so I did, if they need me for anything you know where to find me, he said before disappearing from his spot. Shayera stared at the empty space where had been and then turned his attention to the evil Nazi supergirl asleep on the ground and sighed, this couldn't be good. The founding members of the league gathered around the downed form of Overgirl, a silent conversation passing between them as they glanced at each other, Superman walked forward and gently picked her up and nodded to the others. Well take the pair to the watchtower and put them in the special holding cells, the police can handle the rest of their forces since they seem to just be regular people that had weapons, well hold them until we find out what their purpose was, he said. Everyone nodded, having agreed on their course of action, they made themselves scarce and disappeared from the scene. XXXXXXXXXXX It wasn't until two days later that Naruto heard from Shayera again. According to her, the woman had woken up shortly after being knocked out and proceeded to try and bust out of the cell in the watchtower. After some back and forth between the woman and Batman they found out what her main objective was in coming to Earth. She was after a new heart, apparently her heart was failing due to absorbing too much solar radiation and her heart would give out any day now, her and the aerocopy have been looking for a replacement since learning of this and that's how they showed up on Earth. So they couldn't simply say that from the beginning. Naruto asked Shayera who was sitting across from him at the dining table at his place. She took a bite of her food and shrugged, 
I guess not, we don't know how many different planets she might have tried this on but they've all ended in failure, her heart is either gonna stop or explode soon if she doesn't get a replacement soon though. That's tough, I hope she figures it out when she gets out, Naruto replied nonchalantly. Now Shayera looked mildly amused, well, she thinks she has it figured out, she commented coyly. Raising an eyebrow at the vague remark he made hand motions for her to continue. It seems you made quite an impact on her when you two fought, she's demanded that you show up and help her, said your power is the answer she's been looking for. Naruto stopped mid-bite and stared at the woman in front of him, she wants my help? After trying to kill me and calling me a lowly human. Shayera nodded, she knows you're her only hope so she's all but demanded that you go see her and hopes you'll use your power to give her a new heart. I am suspended from league activity, remember? I am aware but the league told me to pass on a message, they'll hire you to do it. Naruto paused, the league usually meant Batman when money was involved, and if there was one thing Batman had it was money. And they'll just let her go. She didn't kill anyone, surprisingly, they just caused a lot of property damage, she gets her heart and leaves and we never see her again, win-win. Naruto thought about it for a moment, this was a perfect opportunity, the league was going to pay him for this but maybe they had some sort of tech earth didn't have yet, perhaps he could have her tell him about things from her world that could potentially make him some more money here. Smiling to himself at the idea, he nodded, let's go see her then. xxxxxxxxxxxxx The cell she was kept in was in a different wing on the watchtower than where Arrow was being kept, it looked like a standard interrogation room you'd see at a police station, only the walls were two feet thick reinforced with different metals, not only that but some kryptonite had been placed in the room to make sure she was too weak to try anything. Manhunter and Hawkgirl were in charge of looking over him from another room while he spoke to her, had told them his plan and while it would take a little longer to see if he could get anything out of her, Manhunter did see the advantage of potentially getting new technology to advance Earth and the League. After making sure Naruto was ready the two nodded at him to begin, making his way to the door he heard the sounds of locking mechanisms turning within the door and a few seconds later, the door slid open. Overgirl looked up from her spot in the chair in front of the table and raised her head up, Naruto's lips curled upward at the display, even after had beaten her soundly she still tried to keep a proud demeanor. I hear you've been asking for me, I am flattered, Naruto commented as he took a seat across from her and crossed his arms. The woman narrowed her eyes at him, don't be, she spat, you have the power to alter reality which means you can give me a new heart, I've already brokered a deal with your leaders so the sooner we do this the sooner I can stop looking at you. That wasn't nice, he chastised, first of all they aren't my leaders, at the moment I am something of a free agent so I don't have to do anything, he lied, you want my services, you're going to have to pay up like everyone else, there's something you have that I want, he added referring to some of the tech had seen some of her soldiers using when they invaded. Overgirl looked at him with contempt before looking to the side at the small camera that was recording everything, it seemed like she was contemplating something and unless he was mistaken there was even a tint of red on her cheeks, though he didn't know if that was due to anger or not. Fine, she spat standing up, I do this for you and you give me my heart. Naruto frowned in confusion at her words but that frown quickly turned to a wide-eyed look as she all but peeled her top off, letting him stare at her bare breasts, considering this was an evil version of Supergirl, he felt like he was invading her privacy by staring but hey, they were in front of him being presented. Well? Hurry up and get undressed, I don't have much time, knowing that my new heart is within my grasp is making this one race with anticipation, she said, unknown to her her heart wasn't racing for that reason, but because its failure was rapidly approaching. Naruto snapped out of it and discreetly glanced at the camera while the woman began taking her pants off, seeing as they hadn't come bursting through the door he figured they had either turned around or were waiting to see what had do. We should stop this, Manhunter said from the other room. To both of their surprise hot girls stopped the man from clicking one of the buttons that would let him speak, wait, both men and women are more likely to talk and reveal information after sex, maybe we should let him, she said with a straight face, Manhunter stared back with that emotionless look of his and slowly removed his hand. I see, very well, you can wait until they're done and call me, I won't be participating in what the humans call voyeurism, he said bluntly. Hot girl's cheeks heated up slightly at the accusation but she didn't say anything, in fact the reason Shed suggested it was because of a certain rumor that had been spread around, he was supposedly able to make Oracle, a woman who couldn't feel from the waist down, feel it while they had sex, she was curious to see if that was simply an out of control rumor or if there was some truth to it. She stopped the recording for their privacy but kept the display up. Back inside the room Naruto had done as instructed and was now standing up right behind Overgirl who was bent over the metal table, she looked over her shoulder with a frown on her face. What's the hold up? Hurry up and get it over with, 
she half shouted. This wasn't even what I was going to ask for he thought to himself with slight annoyance at her bossy tone, well I am dry, I can't go in like this, even if you were kind of soaked, he added as he ran his hand up her exposed womanhood. He could see her shudder slightly at the contact but that was short-lived, she looked back at him then down at his erect cock and narrowed her eyes, turning around she kneeled down and promptly spit on it. How's that? She taunted, Naruto narrowed his eyes back at her when she turned around and made up his mind, he grabbed her by the hips and without giving her a moment's warning, filled her up completely, he couldn't see it but the woman's eyes had gone wide and her jaw had dropped at the feeling of being taken. This is the second Martian I've had sex with within a month he thought to himself as he began pulling himself out of the woman, fortunately for him it seemed the woman was ready, only one thrust and his penis was already coated with her fluids. Thrusting forward once more he couldn't help but smile in satisfaction at the moan that Overgirl let out, she realized this as well and used one hand to cover her mouth. The blonde allowed her to do that for the next ten minutes while he pounded away at her but soon wanted to hear her. You're a proud woman aren't you? He grunted before smacking one of her cheeks, yet here you are bent over a table by a person you couldn't conquer, he added smacking the other cheek with twice the force. The blonde continued to fuck her relentlessly, enjoying the waves her ass made with each clap of their bodies, after half an hour he could feel her pussy beginning to tighten up to an almost alarming degree and knew she was close. He grabbed both arms and pulled them back, letting the woman's voice echo through the room. Fuck fuck. Fuck you, she cursed, don't stop, I am almost. I am so close, fuck. Naruto's ego was swelling with every curse word she uttered, finally, after hitting a particular spot he could feel her cum coating his tool, not only that but she let out a yell and let off a quick blast of heat vision from her eyes. The kryptonite in the room did its job as the rays didn't penetrate the walls completely but they definitely made it through a few inches of the metal, Naruto let go of her arms and watched as some of Overgirl's hair clung to her face on the table. He could see her shaking slightly from her feet all the way up to her torso, her walls were continuously contracting and expanding around him even as the woman was clearly spent, he had to admit that despite her bitchy attitude she had some of the best box had had. All that big talk and you're spent after this much. Naruto taunted, Overgirl didn't move but he could see a lone eye glaring at him through a gap in her hair. Shut up, she said weakly, lay down on the table, it's easy to brag when you're in control but let's see what happens when you're not, she challenged. Naruto smirked at her and made himself as comfortable as he could on the metal table, on shaky legs Overgirl climbed up onto the table and straddled him at the waist, she grabbed his cock by the base and positioned him right above her opening before dropping down. Oh! Rather than make a quip Naruto leaned forward and enjoyed the view of her breasts bouncing up and down in front of him, he never thought he'd be having sex with a Nazi but here he was, reaching forward he took one of her tits into his mouth and used both hands to grab onto her ass to assist her. He had to give credit where it was due. The woman knew how to ride, she didn't just bounce, she rolled her hips as if belly dancing making sure every inch of him made it inside her, her arms wrapped around his head, encouraging him to pleasure her chest. Overgirl rode the blonde for the next half hour using every trick she knew to get him to bust, her ass cheeks were red from the constant smacks they took, her breasts had bite marks all over them, and her pussy was red from the abuse it had been taking, the woman's face no longer had a frown but a concentrated look, the only thing on her mind. The only thing her lust filled eyes could see was the orgasm she could feel swelling inside her. She could feel her heart racing, pumping blood faster than ever before, but it was disregarded for the moment. The only thing that mattered was getting the cock inside of her to fill her up as much as it could and get her off. Fuck me harder. She yelled in desperation. This is going to be the biggest orgasm of my life, she added through grit teeth. Naruto felt himself approaching his limit and wrapped his arms around her torso and brought her down to lay on top of him while he pistoned in and out of her, the woman's head rested on his chest, eyes closed in preparation of what was coming. Suddenly, just as she could feel herself about to come, she felt it, a pain in her chest flared, it was coming in waves, her body was torn between feeling the pleasure the blonde nuisance beneath her was giving her and the pain in her chest that was steadily rising. In a surprising moment of clarity, it clicked in her mind what was happening her heart was giving out, she had to stop him. Hey, I can't, shit she moaned as more pleasure coursed through her, panic began setting in but she couldn't stop, it was as if her body was moving of its own accord, she tried to tell him to stop, to not let her come but her voice wouldn't come out. I am about to come, Naruto warned, Overgirl's eyes widened in both pleasure and terror as she felt the first rope of semen enter her, that was the catalyst, her orgasm hit like a supernova and waves of pleasure coursed through her, her nails dug into the blonde's body with everything she had as she felt it. No, no, please I can't, she managed to whisper, Naruto felt the woman spasm on top of him, 
both his and her orgasm still going on, after a moment he felt the last few drops leave his body and fill the woman completely. He winced a bit at the amount of pressure she was applying on him while shaking, I can't, lose like this, he heard her say in a tone just below a whisper. He shook his head, she even saw sex as a competition between them it seemed, still, while she was a bitch had keep his word as soon as she got up, glancing down at her he noticed that she was no longer shaking, in fact she wasn't moving at all. Did she really fall asleep? Arrow must not have been giving it to her right if this knocked her out he mumbled to himself, hey, hey, wake up, you want your heart don't you? Still no answer, starting to get slightly worried he moved one of his arms in order to tilt her head towards him and what he saw wasn't good, her eyes were still glazed over but there was no light behind them, that could only mean one thing. Naruto. Shayera called as she barged into the room, get dressed while I check her out, it didn't take him long to be redressed, looking over at the woman he saw her put two fingers to her neck and shake her head. Hawk girl redressed the woman and kept her on the table as she called Manhunter to enter the room. The atmosphere at Naruto's place a few days later wasn't as lighthearted as it usually was when Shayera would come over, normally, the two would hang out as they had been but today she wasn't in a good mood, for the past half an hour Shayera had been trying to tell him potential outcomes, repercussions, and what he should and should NT post on social media as he had become a hot topic almost overnight. Most people who sided with him and believed he simply killed her were those who had been affected in life by the many villains of the world. Those on the other side of the spectrum were those that believed that no one should be killed and everyone should be put in front of a judge and jury. A foolish notion if you asked him but hey, what could you do? When someone has made up their mind they aren't trying to listen to anything else. His eyes followed Shayera's form from his spot on the couch as she paced back and forth muttering to herself, she must have felt his gaze as she stopped mid-stride and turned to look at him with a frown on her beautiful face. Naruto wasn't sure if she did it consciously or subconsciously but when she turned to him, her wings extended slightly which made him wonder if she moved them as easily as she did other parts of her body. How can you sit there and eat chips at a time like this? She asked and angrily swiped the bag from his hand, how aren't you bothered by this? The world thinks you killed Overgirl, even if she was a villain it's still illegal, she added. Warping the chips back into his hand he leaned back into the couch and propped his feet onto the small table in front of him, I am not worried because there's no real case, he said while peeking into the bag to see what chip he would munch on next. Shayera crossed her arms and stood in front of him, giving him a look that screamed explain. Ever since the Justice League was created, or superpowered humans appeared for that matter, they've done the job of the police around the country, he began in between bites, the government now needs to look like it's doing something so this is what's going on, it's a sham really. Oh? How do you figure that? I'd hardly call a murder trial held by the Supreme Court a light matter, she retorted. That's another thing, Naruto said you think the Supreme Court would bother themselves with a murder case? No, it's only them because it's a league member on trial, but anyways, he continued, you wanted to know how it was a sham? There's no recording of the event so there's no real proof that it could have been first degree murder, he said, holding one finger up in the air. It couldn't be second degree murder because again without video there's no proof and it wasn't done with the intent to cause harm or injury, another finger went up. This isn't Florida, Pennsylvania, nor Minnesota so there is no third degree murder, third finger went up, plus, you were a witness to the whole thing so you know I never attacked her, I hope you enjoyed the show by the way, perv, he teased with a smirk at the end. Naruto's smirk widened when he saw the woman's face heat up in embarrassment. Manhunter left and one of us had to stay there to make sure she didn't try anything, for all we knew she could have known cameras would need to be turned off if she started undressing, the winged woman said, trying to justify her actions, she looked away though as she knew her defense was weak and didn't feel like seeing the mons smug look. The blonde nodded at her words, though she could tell it was one of disbelief, your voyeuristic tendencies aside, there's no recording, the woman is dead, had heart problems that she admitted to having which you do have on tape and you also have footage of her engaging the action beforehand, it'll be alright, Naruto said with confidence. Now why don't you sit down? The program is about to start, he said as he patted the cushion next to him, it had become something of a usual thing every time she came around to watch a show about whether the man in a relationship really was the father or not. The show itself wasn't very good but the reactions to the revelation is what entertained them. Shayera sighed to herself and shook her head but sat down nevertheless, even if that's the Kai a lot of people are still uncertain about us, as obviously referred to the League, the government is going to do everything they can to convict you, even if it is to appease those who don't trust us to show them we're not above the law, she said, kicking up her sock clad feet onto the couch. Do you even know how to represent yourself in a court of law? She asked with a worried look, 
This whole time she had been so focused on the details of the trial that she hadn't for a moment thought about how her friend would defend himself. Naruto turned to look at her with a confused look at her question, represent myself. Who said I am going to represent myself? Now it was Shayera's turn to look confused, you've been speaking so confidently and even broke down why this is a sham that I just assumed, she trailed off. Picking out another chip out of his bag he tossed it into his mouth and passed it down before responding, I am not representing myself, I was smart enough to hire a lawyer when I was first granted entry into the league. Just as he was about to tell her more, a knock on the door caused both of their heads to turn towards the front door. Are you expecting someone? Or did the reporters get a little too enthusiastic about getting a headline? The latter question was said with a bit of anger and he could see her reaching for her mace which was resting against the side of the couch. Smiling at her willingness to use violence for him despite only having cleared the air between them not too long ago, he shook his head and raised a hand. Don't worry, he's expected, come in. The door opened revealing a man in a black suit with very thin white pinstripes running along the linen, he had a white button-up shirt underneath the black coat and a matching black tie, in his hand was a briefcase that didn't seem to contain much if the ease at which he was carrying it was any indication. Shayera. Meet my lawyer G, Saul Goodman. From the commercials. Shayera asked in slight disbelief, of all the people she expected, he wasn't one of them. Naruto nodded happily, yup, did you know I have rights? The constitution says I do, the blonde began. And so do I, and so does he, Saul and Shayera finished at the same time, the man had a happy look on his face while the woman had a flat expression. Shayera turned back to look at him, you're really going to rely on him to get you off. You have millions of dollars, why not hire one of the ones Luther uses when he's in legal trouble. Saul opened his briefcase and without turning to look at the two he spoke, get him off. What do I look like? His high school girlfriend, five fingers no waiting. Fuck you. Naruto shot back with a chuckle, anyway I am sure you remember the agreed upon amount? Saul asked rhetorically. Naruto nodded and raised his hand with his palm facing upwards, the space around his hand warped and created a black briefcase similar to the one his lawyer had brought, bringing it down to his lap he undid the latches that kept it closed and opened it for them to see. Inside were neat rows of hundred dollar bills held together by rubber bands. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash waiting for you, he said with a smirk. Good man, now, Saul began, you and I both know the government is going to do everything in their power to lock you up to make themselves look good, he began, unknowingly parroting Naruto's earlier words. The man pulled out a few sheets of paper from his case and began reading through them with a satisfied look on his face, realistically there's no case here so we can bet that they'll also try to vilify you in order to make it seem like something that would be a possibility, however, I happen to know a few things about some people in high places, he added with a devious tone. A few select words here, a few subtle hints that we know things we should nt know and we should be able to win this case fairly easily, he said. Shayera couldn't believe how confidently the two men began discussing the details of how the case would go down, any normal person would be incredibly nervous, even if they thought they stood a good chance, but this wasn't a small claims court and they were laughing and joking like this was no big deal. Deciding not to bother stressing herself any further she swiped the remote from the armrest where Naruto had left it and began flipping through the channels, the guy who found out had been the father didn't even have a reaction so it wasn't worth watching. Mindlessly clicking the button, her attention was captured when it came upon a news station that was going over the impending trail, the news anchor was a woman in her late thirties and seemed to be going around the general public in the DC area to get a feel for where their minds were about the case. Excuse me sir, can I get your thoughts about the impending case against a member of the Justice League for killing the woman now known as Overgirl? The woman asked. The man looked up from his phone and nodded, of course, the guy is as guilty as can be, he stated in a confident tone. Shayera looked over at the two to see if that had gotten their attention but it had apparently fallen on deaf ears, Naruto was nodding at something Saul had said and even laughed. Turning her attention back to the TV she cursed herself as the woman had moved on to someone else. Similar question as the last gentleman, your thoughts on the impending case? She asked. This time it was an older man with noticeable wrinkles on his face, unlike the last man however, he had the look in his eyes of a person who'd seen blood and been through hell, this should nt even be a case, from what we know there's no video proof, all we have is the government saying he did it and needs to be locked up, he's probably my favorite member of the league, he doesn't hide his face and does what's needed in the world against evil. Naruto if by chance you're watching this broadcast, I believe in you and back you up 100%, once you beat the case, if you wanna crack a cold one with some supporters well be it off the record two weeks from Friday, all your drinks are on me, he finished abruptly as the woman thanked him and moved on. Would you like to go to that Shayera? 
Maruto asked suddenly, breaking her gaze from the TV screen. What? I just got invited to a bar by that man next Friday, sounds like it could be a good time, would you like to go? He repeated. Hawk Girl's mouth opened and closed a few times as she tried to formulate a response, did he just ask her out? No that couldn't be it, it was just an invitation to hang out at a bar with some supporters, shit, she still hadn't responded and he was looking at her. Sure. If you beat the case well go, she mentally patted herself on the back for how nonchalant her response came out. Naruto nodded and turned his attention back to his lawyer while she turned hers back to the TV, Shed missed two other people but it seemed like the woman was going for one last interview, this one was a young woman, no older than 20 with a group of her friends behind her all eager to be on TV. She was asked the same question and the response made her shake her head in disappointment. Innocent. Someone that hot should NT be locked up for killing a villain. If you're watching follow me on Twitter my handle is. Why'd you turn it off? Naruto asked with a fake whine. Sheera looked over at him with an annoyed look and once again her wings extended ever so slightly and Naruto was sure she didn't realize that happened, you focus on what Mr. Goodman is telling you, trying to hook up with groupies isn't going to help. Naruto smiled and turned back around to hear the rest of the details, while he wasn't surprised at the news Saul was presenting him as he knew about how the man operated, he was surprised just how much dirt on the government he had, if he was confident had got off before, he was all but assured now. The Thanagarian woman sighed at her own behavior, and stood up from the couch to put her shoes back on, well, I have duties I have to attend to, next time I see you it'll either be here or behind a piece of glass talking to you through a phone, she said jokingly. Don't forget your mace, also, dress casually for the bar alright? Well see, as soon as she opened the door she blinked in confusion, standing directly in front of her was none other than Booster Gold donning his blue and gold costume, Next to him floating in the air was his trusty gold companion head dubbed Skeets. Hawk girl, the man greeted, Booster, was all she said as she walked past him and extended her wings to take to the air. Naruto watched the man enter and sighed mentally, it wasn't that he didn't like the man, far from it in fact, alongside Flash, he considered Booster and Skeets really good friends to him, it was just that the man was very outgoing and always wanted to do something that was exhausting. Had bet every dime he made that he was here to pitch an idea for an outing. Naruto my man, Booster greeted, holding a fist out expecting a bump. Humoring him he bumped fists with him in the metal plating on Skeets, what's up? I am kinda in the middle of going over things for my case. Murder was the case that they gave you huh? I am sure you'll be fine, Booster told him with a wave of his hand, anyways I figure you're at least somewhat tired of all this right? Why don't you, Flash, and I go out tonight? Well hit the club and have a blast to clear your mind. There it was, he wasn't able to reply however as Saul showed him one more file, this one having the image of a large woman on the upper left hand corner, this is our trump card, I doubt well needed but it won't hurt to have it ready, that's really all we have to go over, I'll see you this Friday, my career is gonna take off after this, Saul said as he began packing his papers up. As long as you don't do anything stupid you should have no problem going to a club, Saul added afterward, I know you're not worried but others don't. You're the biggest thing on social media at the moment with a ton of support. Why not let them know you're not worried? Booster turned to look at him, fine, but I am not drinking and I am not taking care of anyone. The man gave a quick yes and told him head tell Flash about it and to be ready at 11 pm. Now that he was alone he sat back on the couch and took a deep breath, this whole thing was a giant inconvenience but at least it would be over soon. The day of the trial the trail itself wasn't a public event but there were updates every few minutes via social media and news sites. It seemed that the entirety of the world was waiting to see how things would play out, among them was one Dinah Lance also known to the world as Black Canary. Currently, she was in the cafeteria up in the watchtower sitting at one of the tables by herself, her perfectly manicured finger pulled the screen down once in order to refresh the page, hoping to see if there were any updates, like a lot of League members she was hoping her fellow blonde would be able to beat the case, not only for her plan but because she knew it would be an injustice for someone like him to spend the rest of his life behind bars. Do you mind? She turned her head left to see Hawk Girl with a tray in her hand. Not at all, the woman sat down and like her, pulled out her phone to keep track of what was going on, the trial had been going on for well over two hours and a half now and only tidbits of information had gotten out, most of it was regurgitated news, just as she was going to refresh, something in her mind clicked. Wait, shouldn't you be there to offer a witness testimony? Canary asked. I thought I would but I was told I wouldn't be needed, same with Manhunter, Hawk Girl replied. That was strange, she thought to herself, mentally shrugging, she put the phone down and continued eating, her thoughts drifted to Naruto and her plan, part of her hoped he wouldn't feel used, 
He liked her enough to sleep with her once so he would probably go for it again but would he be on board with the rest of her plan? Perhaps Shed stick around for a while after, he was pretty fun to be around from what she remembered, plus the many times they'd been on jobs together had proven himself reliable, competent, and trustworthy. Not only that but from what everyone could see, he had something about him that made others happy as well. Glancing at the woman next to her, she discreetly studied her features, Hawk Girl was a hard-headed woman who had been ostracized after the Thanagarian invasion and even though she was allowed back, she had a depressed air to her, that had changed lately since she had been put in charge of overseeing Naruto. They weren't having sex, she was sure of it, but even so she seemed happier, maybe he could do the same for her. Whenever she spent time around Oliver Shed end up pissed, Batman wouldn't socialize, Superman was always away, Flash was too energetic. Do you need something? Canary blinked, maybe she hadn't been as discreet as she thought. Sorry, she apologized, I was just thinking, you and Naruto seem to be good friends now, you weren't exactly thrilled to be put in charge of watching him and now you almost seem, I don't know, eager to go see him I suppose. Was there a question in there somewhere? Hawk Girl shot back, wondering what the blonde was getting at. Hearing the slightly defensive tone in the Thanagarian woman's voice, Canary raised her hands up. It's just we noticed you seem happier since you began spending time with him, I just got curious as to why that is since you two weren't exactly friends before, I don't have too many male friends and I was thinking of maybe getting to know him, she explained. Hawk Girl stared at the blonde for a moment before returning to her food. Canary sighed and stabbed her food with a fork, ready to take a bite when the red-haired woman spoke. We've cleared the air between us, she began, we decided to start over and I found that he's actually a fun person to be around, he makes good jokes, doesn't blame me for being put in charge of his probation and treats me like any other person now, it's nice, there's no look of suspicion in his eyes towards me or anything. The blonde woman smiled at the words, that sounded nice. If you're looking for someone you can be yourself around and still have a good time, he's the person to go to. Dinah opened her mouth to respond and at the same time the two women stopped in place as their phones chimed, alerting them of an update. All over the internet, every news outlet and site covering the topic read the same headline. Justice League member Naruto acquitted of murderer charge. Yes. Both women cried out at the same time, they glanced at each other for a moment before returning to their own phones, having worked together on many occasions Canary already had the younger blonde's number, typing up a quick congratulatory message she also added the bit if he would be okay with her visiting him tonight to celebrate. It wasn't surprising that she didn't get a response until almost an hour and a half later since the blonde was being accosted by news reporters and answering questions, likewise, his lawyer was also being bombarded with questions. Canary had no doubt that the small-time lawyer Naruto had surprised everyone with, would be a hot name in the law world soon. His response was a simple of course, smiling at the confirmation she put the phone back in her pocket and began gathering the things she'd need for tonight, she already had the black lingerie under her clothing, now she just had to make sure everything else was ready. XXXXXXXXXX Later that night after a long day of tedious legal trouble, Naruto finally had a chance to rest, Sure enough Saul had managed to not only figuratively shit on the court but also let it be known that they were aware of the country's less than legal activities, in the end after trying their hardest to save face they had no choice but to let him off. Now here he sat on the couch with his legs up, mindlessly scrolling through various pages on his phone. Knock 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 Naruto blinked and frowned in confusion at the noise for a moment before he realized who it could be, focusing on his powers he willed the entire house to be as clean as possible. Not to say it was dirty but it definitely hadn't been clean enough for company. Heading to the door he opened it to find the one and only black canary dressed in skin tight dark blue jeans, a black shirt along with a blue jacket over it, her hair was flowing freely as it usually was, her black choker was in place, and she had a black purse hanging off her shoulder, his eyes trailed down to her right hand which was holding a small box with some beers in it. I thought we could have a celebratory drink, she said holding up the box. Naruto smiled and took the box from her while letting her in, the woman entered the doorway and hung her jacket on a small hook, Naruto turned around after placing the box on his dinner table to see that the shirt Dinah wore was actually a tank top style shirt which allowed him to see more of her flawless skin. I'll be honest I didn't expect you to reach out to me today, Naruto began, handing her a beer and having one for himself, the two made their way to the couch again and turned on the TV, Dinah sat on the cushion next to him and folded her legs under her turning slightly so her body could be facing his. Dinah had the decency to look slightly downtrodden at his words, yeah it's been a while since we last spoke and for that I am sorry, I'll admit I was avoiding you after what happened last time and I was trying to fix my relationship with Oliver, that didn't go well, some things were said, and were done, she lied, partially. 
she was sure there was no going back after that last outburst they'd had in the watchtower but after tonight there'd be no doubt. I spoke to Shayera and she had good things to say about you so I thought maybe it was time to get one of my friends back, I am done walking on eggshells about what I do because of him, she said, referring to Green Arrow. Naruto nodded, feeling proud of her for taking a stand, as far as he was concerned she was too good for Green Arrow. I am glad. Also as to your point about getting your friend back, we can start now, he said holding up the beer, knowing what he was going for she tapped hers against his and the two began to down the drinks. The two blondes drank for the next two hours simply enjoying each other's presence, catching up on what they'd been doing, and joking around with each other, eventually the topic of the trial came up. I can't believe it, Canary said in between laughs, you and your lawyer had the balls to threaten the government. We didn't threaten we just let some names and events slip while we were there, they inferred it, he explained with a laugh. Canary took a large swig of her beer and crushed it in her hands before placing it on the table and standing to grab another. Naruto's eyes instinctively trailed to her shapely hips and ass, watching as they hypnotically moved side to side as she walked. He quickly looked away when she turned around but had the feeling she knew if the smirk on her face was anything to go by. Hey, while we're on the subject, Naruto saw Canary give him a mischievous smile and he knew what was coming, I heard, that you and Overgirl got it on and she died because you got her to come too hard. How much truth is there to that? She asked excitedly. Naruto sighed, it seemed word managed to get out, as much as he, Hawk Girl, and Manhunter had tried, it seemed some new. I wanted to see if I could get any tech out of her and wanted to come to an agreement, and she assumed I meant sex, so she initiated it, but it seems she underestimated just how weak her heart had become. I didn't realize she was dead until I tried to move her off me, he explained. Canary nodded in a way that told Naruto she didn't believe him, right? You're probably the only guy on earth that can say you made a woman orgasm to death, she laughed. Where was that energy when we were together that night? She teased, rubbing her hand up his arm. Naruto could feel his blood beginning to rush south quickly as the memories of their tryst flooded his mind, I don't remember you complaining, he countered. She shook her head, oh I definitely wasn't, I had to ask someone to cover my patrol the next night because I couldn't walk right, that definitely boosted his ego by a large margin, still, I can't help but wonder. What an orgasm that's to die for feels like, she added, leaning closer to him and running a finger under his chin. Any sane man could see she was giving him the clear green light and he was not going to miss the opportunity, there were a lot of attractive women in the Justice League but if he was being honest, Canary was the one he was most attracted to, had been slightly down after their first time since she broke it to him in the morning that it had been a mistake, now however, he was going to try to give her a reason to keep coming back. If that's what you want. Without wasting another moment Canary closed the gap between them and pressed her lips onto his, as if acting on their own their mouths opened and their tongues met, sliding against each other adding to the heat their bodies were beginning to feel. Naruto reached over and with little effort pulled the woman onto his lap, Dinah squealed into his mouth when she felt herself be pulled onto him but wasn't complaining, her hands wrapped around his neck and slowly began sensually gyrating her hips, the woman's ego began swelling up when she felt herself being poked through her pants. Breaking their kiss she leaned back some and looked down at his crotch then back up at him with a flirtatious smile, she pressed her forehead onto his and reached down to rub his erection over his pants, their breaths were labored, both feeling really hot at the moment and the intensity of their stares only added fuel to the fire. Wow, that was all Dinah could utter at the moment. Yeah, Naruto muttered as his hands slowly traced up and down her sides over her shirt. Canary leaned once more and initiated another kiss, this one slower with more emotion behind it. You want to help me with something? She asked in a whisper. What do you need? Dinah sighed, I haven't told you this but Oliver cheated on me, a lot, she revealed, even if he tried, Naruto couldn't be surprised by the news. Dude was an asshole and this was simply part of the mon's identity, Shore had technically cheated on Barbara but that was a paid gig, Oliver did it while in a committed relationship willingly. I know this will sound petty of me but I want him to pay. Now Naruto was interested, how so? I want you to fuck me, she ordered, before he could say anything she raised a hand, and film it. The blonde's eyebrows raised high at the declaration, he wasn't against the idea, far from it in fact, he was all for making an amateur video, I assume Oliver is going to see it. She nodded, Naruto smirked, so what are we waiting for? He asked, quickly standing and throwing the woman over his shoulder, Dinah reached onto the couch for her purse which contained what they would be needing for the night, a few steps later they were in his bedroom. Dinah removed herself from the blonde's hold and quickly got the small camera out of her bag, carefully placing it on the dresser Naruto had in the room, quickly making sure it had plenty of life she carefully angled it towards the bed and made sure the lighting was good, if last time was any indication, 
she had a feeling she'd be up till the sun getting some. This is gonna be fun, she thought. Glancing at her purse once more she reached in and grabbed a handful of small squared packages she'd brought with her and turned her head to see her lover for the night, he had removed his shirt, giving her an eyeful of his wonderfully built body, instantly she was flooded with images of him looking down on her ramming her and the packages were dropped back into the purse. The last time they'd slept together she'd been smart enough to use protection, same with Oliver, she'd never gone without it but this time, Naruto would be getting lucky. Clicking record she quickly peeled her top off and slid out of her jeans, letting the blonde get a good look of the black silk lingerie that lay beneath her clothes, he was always a fan of how good her legs looked in the black fishnet style tights she wore but seeing her in stockings and hooking the small hooks to the garter belt that was put in place made his heart beat a little faster. I take it you like what you see? She teased, strutting towards him, crawling onto the bed, she pushed his chest to get him to lay down completely, undoing his pants was an easy job and soon her prize was before her. Naruto leaned up onto his elbows to get a good look at her then he looked up at the camera and smirked, he was sure Arrow would be punching the air at the sight, the only thing he'd be able to see would be Canary's wonderful ass in the air and her head bobbing up and down in between his legs. He looked back down to see the woman looking up at him with those beautiful eyes of hers while her mouth took more of him in, moving a hair from her face he couldn't help but close his eyes momentarily and groan in pleasure, her tongue was working him expertly it slid up and down his length with every bob of her head and would make sure to swirl around his head when she went up. For fifteen agonizingly pleasurable minutes the woman expertly sucked his cock, taking him down to the base and choking occasionally but taking it like a champ. Ah she groaned after letting him out of her mouth, her eyes were slightly red due to the tears welling up from choking a few times but to him she couldn't look hotter, like that. She asked while stroking him slowly. You have no idea, he muttered, wiping a stray tear that made its way down her face, her mascara had run slightly, and her hair was slightly disheveled from the grip on her head giving her that familiar sex look. You haven't come yet she pouted cutely, I've worked hard so where's my prize? She asked, running her tongue along the slit of his cock, her tongue trailed down his shaft, starting from the head she licked down and traced over every vein on his member, the entire time her eyes never left his. They were pleading with him to give her what she wanted and who was he to deny? She wanted a prize? Head give her one. He stood up on the bed and she quickly caught on, getting up on her knees she took him into her mouth and began sucking with vigor, her pussy began to drip slightly not only at the thought of what was to come but also because of the fact that they were recording it, it gave her an extra feeling of excitement. Here's your prize Dinah, he grunted and pulled out of her mouth, the woman obediently opened her mouth and let her tongue hang out, eagerly waiting to catch the young mon's seed, she didn't wait long and soon blast after blast of baby batter filled her mouth and coated her forehead and upper nose. Dinah made a show of facing the camera and swallowing before using a finger to gather the rest on her face and taking that in her mouth as well, putting the digit in her mouth she swirled her tongue around her finger making sure no drop remained on it. Delicious, she chirped while looking up at him, Naruto was instantly hard at the display which caused Dinah to smirk in amusement, seemed he couldn't get enough of her. Go on and lay down so I can give you the time of your life, she ordered. Not even Flash would be able to match the speed at which he was laying down, likewise, Canary was on him in a heartbeat but facing away from him. The blonde noticed she didn't have a condom this time and was going to ask if that was okay since she seemed really insistent on it last time but was beaten to the punch, Dinah teased herself with his cock, rubbing it along her slit a few times before taking the plunge. Oh that feels amazing she cried, enjoying the way his girth stretched out her inner walls, her arms came down to support herself on the bed and began bouncing up and down eagerly. Naruto grabbed hold of her hips and guided her as she rode him. While he couldn't see, the camera was getting the best shot of the action, her breasts were bouncing almost hypnotically matching the pace the two had set, Canary had the widest smile on her face as she could already feel the first signs of an orgasm approaching. Fuck. Bareback feels amazing, she moaned, the woman slowed her pace and rolled her hips along his length the way a stripper would during a dance, the heat in her core was building and she wanted the camera to get a good look at the moment it hit. Here it comes. Don't stop she said in a lust-filled tone, she leaned forward and continued bouncing even faster, desperate to get off, shit. Canary stopped and try as she might, she couldn't hold herself up and fell backwards onto the waiting blonde, Naruto opened his arms and wrapped them around her midsection, slowly continuing to thrust in and out of her as she rode her orgasm. Naruto could feel the woman tremble above him and he quickly tilted her head to look at him, Dinah looked back with lidded eyes and a permanent smile plastered on her face, he couldn't help but let out a chuckle and breath of relief. That was good, not enough to kill me though don't worry she said with a chuckle, not letting him respond she pecked him on the lips once then twice. Are you still able to continue? 
Maruto asked, his thrusting never having stopped. The woman nodded yes, she felt a shiver go down her spine when he gave her a predatory look, one that promised a hard fucking, she loved it. You wanted an orgasm to die for right? The next thing Canary knew, she was tossed forward, forced onto her hands and knees, she licked her lips and prepared herself as she knew what was coming. Naruto lined himself up with her soaking entrance and penetrated, her wonderful ass clapped every time their bodies met, seeing it make his meat disappear with every thrust he couldn't help himself and grabbed a handful of her cheek, kneading it as if it were dough before pulling back and giving it a firm slap. Her walls tightened around him after the smack, a discovery he began to abuse, every thrust was followed by a smack resulting in her moaning louder and louder, squeezing him tighter and tighter. He could feel every inch of her walls hugging him tightly, begging him to not leave, soon the woman's cheeks were a dark shade of red from the abuse they'd been put through but not once had Canary complained. You like it rough don't you? He grunted, Canary responded with moans, it seemed like she wanted to reply but her mind was clouded with lust. I ask you something, Dinah, he said, grabbing her by the hair and pulling her head up so it was facing the camera. Yes I like it rough, she yelled, Naruto could feel her grow wetter while he plowed into her, she was thrusting back with vigor and he knew she was going for that next orgasm, luckily for her he had a plan, his own release was approaching and he was going to make their moment unforgettable. Tell Oliver how it feels, he said not letting go of her hair. Canary stared into the camera, biting her lip as she did so, she knew her makeup was ruined and probably looked like a hooker but she didn't care, she was having the time of her life and she would let Oliver know it. It feels amazing. It's so deep. I am so close, fuck me harder, please, she pleaded through her lust-filled moans. Feeling his release approaching, Naruto drilled into her faster and harder, her walls tightened around him and he knew this was the moment. Tapping into his powers, he made her feel what Overgirl had felt just before her death for a split second. At that moment it was over, the floodgates opened and he proceeded to fill her to the brim with his seed, Dinah followed suit a split second later in a dramatic fashion. Naruto. The power of the orgasm combined with the feeling of her heart rapidly speeding up for a moment caused her to scream his name, that wouldn't have been a problem normally, she did it last time too, this time however, the scream had been followed by her own powers activating resulting in a canary cry that destroyed the windows, his TV, and dresser, the walls of the place cracked under the immense pressure but held up luckily. Dinah slumped over, her face falling into the mattress, her body rose and fell lightly letting him know she was alive, the sight of a pussy leaking his cum never got old to him but something about it being canary made it that much better. Dinah, are you okay? He asked softly, chuckling lightly when he got a few grunts in return he helped her up and noticed the far off look in her eyes, how was that? With some mild difficulty, Dinah turned herself around and hooked her arms and legs around him and pulled him back inside her, do it again, please, she begged. Looked like she was fine, the two resumed their activities well into the night, not stopping until 7am the following morning, in that time the damage to his room was major, nothing he couldn't fix but it was definitely the first time it had gotten this far. Carefully maneuvering her onto the right side of his bed, he stretched and went to join her, he had bags under his eyes from lack of sleep and cuddling up next to the older woman was just what he needed to feel better. That was the plan at least until he heard his phone go off, he didn't answer but it persisted, ringing over and over until had had enough and picked up, to make matters worse it was an undisclosed number. What? He asked rudely, he was trying to sleep damn it. I apologize for the early call, I hope I am not interrupting, he heard a woman's voice from the other line. Who is this? He asked, Amanda Waller. I am sure you've heard of me. I have, nothing good I am afraid, a shame, anywho, ill get to the chase, I was referred to you by a client of yours, he spoke well, said you get the job done quickly and efficiently. What could a government official want with me that they couldn't do themselves? He asked, peeking over he made sure Canary was still asleep. I need someone taken out of a prison for my special task force, unfortunately I've been limited on who I can take, this job depends on her abilities so I need you to get her for me. A breakout? Does this person have a name? Louise Lincoln, perhaps you may know her better as Killer Frost, she revealed. If you reached out to me I assume you know I don't work for free? Of course, I am offering 15 million dollars for this job to be done without a hitch, I want you to make it look like a regular breakout, no trace of you, I'll send you a blueprint for the prison she's being held in, I need her in two days, I'll tell you where we'll meet up for the exchange, are we in agreement? She asked. Naruto narrowed his eyes in suspicion. Waller was not one to be trusted, still, this was an easy $15 million dollars for him, if she tried to screw him over, had take care of her one way or another, deal, I'll be waiting for the information, 
a pleasure Naruto put the phone down and crawled into bed, had deal with whatever Waller needed later, right now, there was a bodacious blonde in his bed that he needed to cuddle up next to, thanks for watching.